Oh, did everybody hear that? That was weird. Recording in progress. Okay, That's here we go. It's a new feature. So safety, uh, before we launch in this, as I mentioned on the uh, Discord, it's I usually things are a little between PG-13 and R. Um, I don't like go into great detail, but I think I've realized over the years that I have a tendency to go, you know, like the, the kind of, um, there's kind of a gritty survival horror aspect sometimes. I mean, not like, like overt forced horror, but you might find yourself in situations where things are dire and not so great, right? Um, and I do get into describing like creepy monsters and whatnot. So that's stuff. Um, and I can scale any of that back. If there's a monster that comes up that just pushes your buttons wrong, just say, can we not? And um, I'll totally, we'll, we'll, we'll switch it up. So whatever, you know, um, the quote unquote X card is in effect. Um, if you want to do that, and then we can move past any kind of uh, a thing that has arisen that you, that you want to, um, and just you, and feel free to just speak up at any point. Um, if something bothers you. And I also try to be conscious of that stuff. You know, anything that is potentially um, difficult, I try to like, you know, I'll just stop and ask questions and see if it's cool with everyone, if it seems like it's, it's rough. Um, your, so the pace, as I've also mentioned, I'm gonna try to keep it pretty tight. You're gonna leave town and come back to town tonight. Um, and, uh, this isn't so the way the game works the way i've come up with it is like there's this world it's not fully developed um you know some of the facts if you've read any part of the discord at all um and what i do is as people choose missions i then go and develop the where the mission takes place right so you guys have decided to go into the ribbon wood you don't even know why yet because you you're, you're going to meet the person shortly who will tell you why um, but then in the time since you made that decision, and now I sort of developed some of that area and figured out what you'd be up against. And the way I do that is I use a lot of random tables to generate a lot of material. And then I kind of contextualize it and try to make it um, make sense within the game world. So um, this is, you're going off into uncharted territory to see what you will find. There's no such thing as encounter design in this game. There's no balance. So for all you know, I rolled up an ancient dragon that lives in the ribbon wood and will um, you know, annihilate you at first glance. So it's sort of up to you to um, evaluate your, your safety at any given moment, right? If things look bad and you should have ample you know, um, resources to figure out if things look bad, um, you can make the call to, to bail um, and return to town or retreat or whatever. Um, so, uh, and as a result, we don't know how long this session is going to last. <laughs> Maybe two hours from now, three of you will be dead. <laughs> and the last person will try to get back to town, right? Or uh, um, if it sort of goes to its full, the fullest extent, I imagine, by the end of our session, we'll be, you'll be turning around and heading back to town, having successfully accomplished what you set out for. All right. Does that make sense? It's all about making do with what you have. Um, the way you get experience points in this game on the back of your playbook, um, it tells you everybody has a class-based way of gaining experience, which is the first thing on the list in your little, um, in the XP area. So Beth, in your case, the thief, you're a thief. Um, one way you gain XP is by um, solving a problem with stealth or trickery, right? Um, and then, so everybody has their class-based one. So for a fighter, it's solving a problem with physical prowess. For, what do we have? We have, let's see, Sessa Fighter, right? Am I got that right? Is it Isan? Yes. Is that your character's name? Isan, yes. Yeah. Um, um, oh, and if you guys could rename your Zoom so that with that, with your oh, like Bob's already done, oh, Abdil right. Bark. And Bob is a magic user, is that right, Bob? Yeah, it's interesting though, Jason, because I note that uh, between the playbook and one of the other documents I was reading, um, the playbook says solve a problem with magic. One of the other documents said solve or create a problem with yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah, that's the latest I'm feeling one. like that's, my yeah, efficacy yeah. just. That's that's the latest one is solve or create a problem with magic. Solve so or create. Yeah, okay, so yeah, the latest totally is create. create. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Take that into And then um, Adam, I believe, is a bard. Is that right? Thumbs up. Yeah. Um, and the bards is like, well, Bob, you played a bard. It's like, um, perform a memorable song or something like that. Right? Um, oh yeah, memorable performance, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody has their class thing. Yeah. Everybody has an alignment thing that gets you XP. Um, 
those don't often get triggered, but some people really lean into those and really go for it. Uh, if you have any questions about what it is, Beth, what's your alignment? Uh, yes, I was gonna ask, I was trying to figure that out earlier today, what the alignment triggers are. So mine's is true neutral. Ah, true <laughs> neutral. The biggest alignment in the world. <laughs> so that is maintain a balance or uh, I think advance a personal interest. Yes, yeah, so satisfy you, a personal <laughs> desire. Satisfy a personal desire. So it's all about like, whatever your personal desires are, or, you know, going for the kind of nature balance thing, if you want to do that. Um, so after worst. alignment goals, there are trait goals, which are those character descriptions, those personality descriptions. You have two or three of those. Um, mm -hmm. If you hit any one of those, you get XP. Um, if you hit one or all of them, it doesn't matter. Any, any way you slice it at the end of the session, you'll just get one XP for hitting any. Not, not, it's not per. Um, so those are your individual goals. And then collectively, you get XP for um, finding some memorable booty as a group. Um, help me out, Bob. Uh, discovering something new about the world. Discovering something new about the world. That yep. would be very easy. And uh, overcoming a difficult obstacle. Overcoming a difficult obstacle. Right. So you don't actually get XP for killing monsters. Right. Um, however, the fighter. Could be an obstacle, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's going to be an obstacle. Since the fighter's, the, the fighter's trigger is. Um, physical prowess, it doesn't matter if the fighter is like holding a door shut against a troll trying to get through or killing a monster or whatever. It's just, it's just so there's no, um, the, the idea is to not necessarily, uh, you know, so to encourage you to do that kind of thing when it's necessary or it's in character, but not just for the XP. Um, each one of those things I just listed is worth one XP. Um, they're awarded at the end of the session and on the back of your character playbook it shows you there's a little xp track because you can count up towards um level one um hey jason i was gonna you asked me before the sort of unique things to point out or highlight yeah. um one of the things is is about uh sort of the the silver into uh stash into xp yeah just highlighting that because i do think that's a very different sort of mechanic because i do also you know the the idea that um we're all looking for a comfortable retirement. I mean, in some yep. ways that's... Yep, thank you, yes. So when you get treasure and you stash it away back at town for every hundred silver pieces you stash away, you get an XP, um, which is a call back to that old form of D&D &D where that's what, that's what loot was, was, was experience points. Um, you don't get to spend it, you have to sock it away for the future. Um, and sometimes if you have like a gold crown and just encrusted with jewels and you don't know how much it's worth, you can say, I stash it and then I tell you how much it was worth. Or you can try to get it appraised or assessed, or perhaps our thief actually knows a thing or two about what treasure's worth. <laughs> so that is one encouragement, one inducement to, um, to find treasure is that it's, it can uh, help you level up. Um, I'm going to ask for a, uh, a leader slash caller for the group so that when you get to a tough decision point or you have to strategize, we keep conversation to a minimum and then whoever our leader is will make the final call. And it may come to a point where I'll say like, okay, wrap up the conversation, what's the answer, right? Because we've all been in games where people spend endless amount of times plotting heists and whatnot. Um, so the advantage, <laughs> the advantage of a leader or caller is, is to do that. So I'm going to suggest that Beth be the caller since the thief was the one who put this team together. But Beth, if you don't want that, you're cool with that. Okay, awesome. Um, so it was um, Lily's. Lily is the person who threw this crew together. So um, Lily is our de facto leader. Against all odds. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's your luck again? It's like four or something. It's four. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> Um, mechanically, the things you need to be aware of, just to be conscious of, normally, like I said, just describe what your character does and follow through. Luck is an interesting thing in that um, if a bad thing happens to the party as a whole, and it might have an equal chance of happening to anybody in the party, it will happen to the person who has the lowest luck. And the reverse is also true. If, if somebody, if somebody you know, drops a, a bag of gold out of a window and you're all walking by below, it's whoever has the highest luck it'll land in their lap, right? So um, those two things are at play. You can spend luck, you can burn luck to increase die rolls, any die roll, and only ever one for one. So, um, and because it's PBTA, there are these thresholds of success and we'll deal with that when the time comes and I'll remind you that you have the opportunity to spend luck, but it's a finite resource in the sense that it goes down, it's really hard to get it back up. 
And to, when you level up, you get back luck equal to your new level. So that's one way to regain it. Otherwise, it's very hard to recover. And sadly for Lily, there's almost no way to increase your maximum luck. <laughs> well, yeah, what's pretty... what's Lily's luck stat, by the way? Uh, four. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, all right, fair enough. I'm, at, I'm at, uh, Abdul is at a six, so. Oh no, man, you're positively like. Charmed. I was just gonna say, yeah, just absolutely. Like, guys are smiling on you, all that shit. Right. Engage. Uh, if, you, if I tell you Isan's luck, I feel like this is gonna go the same way as the weather conversation went because, uh, well, I'm gonna tell you, it's 15. Woo! <laughs> like, was the highest stats. Nice. I you literally, rolling. you literally have more luck than the entire rest of the party. <laughs> <laughs> oh we'll no! See. Wait, sorry, I did that math. I did that math wrong. You have one less luck than the entire rest of the party. <laughs> So Adam, what does that give you? You got an eight? No, I have a six a, as well. Six. Oh my God! Wow, you yeah, guys. Two okay. sixes and a four between us. Yeah. So, so technically, Nissan maybe not very lucky to be with this party. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bad luck <laughs> Um. So a, a luck of six is considered unlucky. Uh, that's the, that's the tag associated with that. And a luck of four is considered ill-fated. <laughs> So sometimes things just go bad. I think the crowd is rooting for for Wiley the thief here. Um, and yeah, then there's a move. <laughs> there's a move called keep company, which is uh, you have a conversation, tell a story with a fellow party member, and it's a way to build up bonds with them. And um, bonds, when you have bonds with somebody, you can increase their roles. You can if you help out, right? You can always add one to help somebody, whether or not you have a bond with them. Um, but if you have a, if you have bonds with them, you can um, mark your bonds to increase that more. So as a party, if you um, uh, develop relationships with each other, you'll be able to help each other out more. Um, bum, bum, bum. Oh yeah, we need a mapper, somebody who's willing or not. You guys don't have to. It can all be. You're all just remembering what happens. This is not a map every five foot square kind of thing. It is. It is like here's the hills over here's a river, and then when you get down, when we drill down, it'll be like an old school text adventure where you just draw a circle and label it and draw a line to the next place, right? And then we only drill down into like tactical positioning if it's, if it's relevant and we can't kind of collectively picture it in the theater of the mind. So that's the only time we get super specific. Otherwise, it's just describing the situation and clarifying um, if anybody has any, any need for that. Uh, so I have a flat surface paper and pen uh, that's the qualification I have. But if anyone else is actually inclined or or uh, is is better to uh, or is better at this sort of thing, then you are welcome to to take on. Okay, no, I'm getting okay. Fair enough. Flat surface and, and it paper. It certainly it makes sense for our um, our magic user to be. Uh, I do have ample paper chronicling yeah. chronicling <laughs> this uh, these movements. That's true. Um. All right. Yes. Yeah, so you probably only have a few hit points. <laughs> All of you, I assume that you've got pretty low three, oh. three up there. Hello, three. There yeah. we go. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's not OSR in the sense that if you're down to zero, you're just flat out dead. There, you do, you do stand a chance of surviving, but uh, you could end up in even worse shape and maybe wish you were dead. But so it's not the end of the story if you do get down to zero, but it. Um, there's a chance it is. Yeah, I will. Um, I will just say I do love because I was refreshing myself on that. I do love the fact that you. It's it's four four results. Uh, pick three out of out of you uh, going negative, and it's sort of like the choice of do you want to have the permanent ability score damage, or do you want to force the rest of the party to drag your unconscious body out. You can be <laughs> conscious or you can take the permanent damage. And I imagine you know, you're kind of like, I don't really want to lose any ability stats. You guys are cool like dragging me out, right? <laughs> yeah, the word force may not be applicable when you're unconscious. You may not be able to force your party members to uh, No, that is that true. For you. That is true. Yeah. Um, okay, any questions before we get started? <laughs> Uh, in terms of dice, do we just need D6s, like a standard PBTA? Um, D6 for all your move rolls, but then um, weapons and whatnot, you will uh, you'll may use a different die depending on the weapon. That's very classic D&D, like a sword, a D8, right. et cetera. Um, okay. It's good to have a D12 handy, because I will ask you, I don't roll any dice, so, uh, and if there's anything that needs to be randomly generated, I'll ask you guys, but if you don't have a D12, I can just ask somebody else for that. I got my whole dice bag out, so I got them all right now. 
That's what I like to see. So the next one. Never dice. use my D12s. I've got my uh, my um, what do you call game science dice from the one time I went to Gen Con. <laughs> Are those those ones where you have to? Slice off the bits of plastic that stick out. Yeah, yeah. Clean, clean up your own flashing and color your own numbers. Oh yeah, no, Jason and I know a guy who swears by them. Wait, who's that? Dean. Oh. Dean. <laughs> who like ta who talks at length about the uh, the, the precision the engineering guy, the precision engineering. Yeah, sharp enough to cut yourself on. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to show you. Let's see, where's my share screen? Share screen. Here is our map of the world. This is what we know. This is the known world. Um, and um, <clears throat> so, as you know, you're all in Munhadir, right here, smack in the middle of the map. The Western Wilds are off to pretty sort of like it sort of actually goes from north to west to south. That's all largely unexplored. And as you can see, even the quote unquote civilized world, there are areas that people don't know a whole lot about. Um, so here we are in Munhadir, um, this uh, frontier town built on the ruins of an ancient Ajat fortress, uh, only recently kind of repopulated. Uh, and you've all come here to um, seek your fortune. And um, at this point, uh, I'm just going to ask you each uh, uh, one or two things about your character. I'm going to say, uh, for the sake of expediency, that you're all going to be um, uh, you're going to uh, meet up at the uh, the meeting place where you're supposed to meet your contact for this job. The spiral arch. The spiral arch in um, Dry Basin. Uh, your contact being Jasra El Majid. And um, in this game, basically, you know everything about your character, your character's experience, your character's knowledge. So you can make up anything you want about your background, about what you've seen, where you've been. If anything seems kind of questionable, um, pushes the boundaries of believability or, um, or, or seems maybe too powerful, I might ask you to roll to establish that fact, which is a move based on your intelligence. So the smarter you are, the more stuff you can know and make up. Um, so anytime, you know, you might say, for instance, um, I was trained by a, you know, a master, uh, like by a sword master in a coastal town. That sounds great. That sounds legit. Um, but then if, if you start, if you say like, and you know, when I, when I graduated, he gave me his magic sword and then I might have to make you roll for that. <clears throat> and also you do all have the equipment that uh, you started with and have already kind of purchased at the marketplace, but um, establish is a move that um, you can use to do anything from tell us something about your past that um, may help you in a given situation. Or like, for instance, um, oh, I know this guy that runs the, I know this guy that runs the tavern and he can totally hook me up with X, Y, or Z. Um, you can make that part of your character's history. Um, and if it's, um, if it gives you a particular advantage, I might ask you to roll for it. But if it like is totally believable and in keeping, then um, uh, it could just be. Um, as the judge, my job is to kind of like try to be as kind of impartial uh, in my evaluation of that stuff as I can. Um, Another fact along those lines that I was thinking of. Oh, um, oh yeah, and you can also use um, established to flashback. So like, um, oh, before we came to this tavern, I actually arranged for my friend to be sitting in the back room, right? So you didn't actually tell me that ahead of time before you went in the tavern, but you can have a flashback just like in Blades of the Dark uh, and you would roll to establish that as true. Um, so it has that, that move established has a variety of applications there. Um, so we're going to start, let's see, I'm just like looking here at my screen, Abdil, Bob is at the top of the top of the screen here. So Bob on the day, oh, first thing, Bob, I want you to check weather for this day. So That's roll totally 2d6 nice. plus nothing to see what the weather's like on this day where you're going to meet your contact. 10. All right. Conditions are good for, um, for springtime. This is early spring in this part of the world. That's going to mean, um, Blue, like bright, deep blue skies, couple of clouds, um, bright sun. Um, how early does Abdil get up? Uh, so usually with the dawn, he is an early riser um, and uh, goes out and uh, does his, his oblations, oblations to the, 
the um, to the to the gods in the morning. No particular god, but like the, the, the well, a, a number of them. Uh, so in in particular, uh, what uh, Thalatadhab uh, and Lyamut again. The uh, I don't know what you call it. Um, the spinning wheel, the the spinning wheel, the 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 layers of them, and the uh, the fact that Talat Hatab is having a, a beautiful, is giving us a beautiful day today. Oh, great! But tomorrow, tell me a little bit about the spinning wheel. Is that um... it's <clears throat> it's uh, it's the the intersection of Talat Hatab and Liamut. Okay. These the the good and the evil, the um, the the life and the and the death, uh, or undeath, okay. and um, Abdil as a as a student of the blood arts um, is is uh, sort of constantly drawn to uh, the balance of things and the um, the interaction of everything, the push and the pull. Is there like a symbolic? Is there a um, is there a representation of the spinning wheel of any kind? Like a that's part of your ritual, or is your ritual purely like uh, uh, there me- is, you know, yeah, to- there is, there is, um, and it's not a it's it's sort of I'm, I know there are a thousand different sort of sects and cults running about uh, uh, Munhadir and other and other towns, but um, for for his especially. Uh, given his background and his um, the, the circumstances of his exile, um, all of his symbols and and sort of services he practices are are very private, very secret. But yes, he has um, sort of interlock interlocking digits, little furred digits with his tiny little nails, uh, and sort of a complex a complex rocking motion he does um, in the morning, looking up at the looking up at the the sun, rising sun. And for those of you that don't know, Alf, uh, Abdil is an Alpharon, one of the Vol yeah. folk. So uh, diminutive, tiny like, little beady eyes, tiny little beady eyes. Little hunched, hunched neck and shoulder, yeah. uh, shoulders, and for him, very grayed fur that's all as- askew and askance, uh, as if you just stuck a digit in the light socket, <laughs> and this turban that somehow inexplicably is attached to his his enormous furred dome, uh, but. Most notable, his ears, um, each of them are, are cut almost to the quick, sort of two Ooh. slices, each one um, that, because uh, yeah, normally they'd be these, these beautiful rounded. Oh my gosh, that's awful. Little vole ears. Poor guy. Mm. Um, great, th- I mean, <laughs> great. Great. <laughs> great, horrible detail about your no. ears. Um, thank you. Um, and uh, Beth, uh, when we first meet Laylee on the way to the meeting place, can you describe for us um, like how Laylee moves through the street or what Laylee looks like? Tell us anything you want about Laylee's um, movement towards uh, Dry Basin. Yeah, um, uh, Laylee loves the rooftops actually. Um, so she doesn't walk on the streets or she avoids walking on the streets whenever she can, but instead she like, especially in tightly packed districts, like jumps from roof to roof, uh, kind of clambering up walls and like teetering on the knife, like knife's edge of ridges and things like that. Um, uh, and she's quite good at it too, because, uh, you know, a long time ago, you know, she uh, she comes from a actually a well-to-do family in the capital, and she learned to dance and she learned to uh, you know to to perform. And so you know those acrobatic skills and those performance skills certainly like keep her from taking a fall over the edge. Um, Laylee's really uh, like barely more than a child, mm-hmm. right? She's maybe sixteen, maybe seventeen. Um, she wears clothes that were like were once actually quite nice, um, you know, beautiful embroidered like silks. Uh, she has like a very nice pair of of leather boots um, uh, that you know look like they were uh, quite that they might have been custom, and they have like bronze toes on them. Actually, Ooh, nice. Um, it's my random item, nice. beautiful boots. Um, because that's so useful um but like her time here in the city like you know this seems to be her only outfit and so they're like her clothes are torn and and stained with water and sand and dirt 
um, and the colors are fading. Um, she's got, uh, she's human. She's got uh, kind of matted, this mess of like curly uh, dark brown hair, which she like ties back with a, a frayed, um, you know, silk ribbon. Uh, but it still doesn't really do any good. And like as the wind kind of on the rooftops like catches her, like her hair kind of goes all over the place and she's constantly pulling it out of her eyes. Amazing. <laughs> and so great because this town is full of, um, uh, you know, buildings that butt up against each other with roofs at different levels, like super perfect for, for Lily to like bound and, and leap from place to place. Okay, great, awesome. I can totally picture that as she's making her way there. Um, how about Isan? I'd like to know, is there anything that Isan does in preparation for uh, this kind of thing in terms of like his um, his arms and armor? Like what does Isan have in terms of gear and like what does he do to prepare for uh, an undertaking? So um, Isan uh, is very kind of um, well scrubbed and disciplined, uh, raises, they, they wake up with the dawn um, and um, kind of go through a methodical um, exercise program almost, and the oiling of the armor um, and uh, the shaving of the scalp. And um, they also just, you know, appearance wise, have um, tattoos that line, um, you know, up the arms, across the back, and even up onto the face uh, to the point of makeup being tattooed almost like you know lip liner and eyeliner being Whoa. tattooed um almost a you know a somewhat androgynous and uh, purposefully um you know uh, i guess um a, like androgynous look to kind of kind of confusing gender wise um and very, very um, measured in their clothes and, and their movements. Um, and that, and so they arrive at the appointed place, um, you know, having spent several hours um, detailing and oiling that armor <laughs> that uh, they have, their scale armor um, and buckling the uh, scimitar in just the right place. <laughs> and keeping that buckle and just the, you know, that buckler just at hand so it can be grabbed and making sure that the bow um, string is oiled and taut and um, wound. Wow, so you are geared up for, you're, you're ready. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. And I forget, is Isan human? Isan is human. Isan yes, is okay. Isan. Um, okay. And uh, I did uh, roll the gender and got the they, them. Okay. Yeah, um, cool. And Great. so, yeah. Um, um, amazing, totally put together, uh, uh, cuts mm -hmm. a fine figure, great. And um, when um, Isan shows up at the, um, the arch in um, Dry Basin, I think Oz is already there. So Adam, uh, um, this, um, the ruined arch, is that what it's called? <laughs> Spiral arch. Spiral arch, thank you. Spiral arch is a, a, a fragment of ancient Ajat um, masonry that has kind of like fallen at an angle and um, it's become, there's a well nearby and it's sort of turned to, to kind of like a, um, a gathering place. It, it would, it would be like a kind of, uh, outdoor almost cafe, except there's, there's no proprietor. It's just like a place where people gather. Um, sometimes they gather to, and in this case, maybe see a performance or just gather to chat. And there's usually tea vendors and other kinds of, um, street food available, um, here. So there's like the chatter of uh, uh, street folk. This is this is what Dry Basin. This gives it an image of what Dry Basin might look like. So the bright sun on this almost blinding white. Um, uh, uh, a lot of these buildings are painted with lime, so they have that that bright white appearance to them. Um, you know, there's chickens around. There's you know, braying of a donkey. The whole kind of. Uh, uh, busy and this is a poorer part of town um, but not like crime ridden or anything like that like people um, don't have a lot of resources and maybe they're a little shabbily dressed but it's not the kind of place where you'd necessarily be afraid to walk down an alley um, uh, and this is where the spiral arches where your contact is supposed to meet you and Oz is already there when Isan shows up <clears throat> and so Adam what do we what do we see what do we um, what can we tell about Oz just from looking and what is Oz up to uh, Oz is uh, short and slight, even for an Ibnaquan, uh, with uh, with big ears, even for an Ibnaquan. Um, 
he wears uh, the, the same clothes he wore the day he fled the, the palace after the coup, but they haven't been properly laundered or cared for in a while. Sometimes he sort of you know, rubs them in, in, in dust or leaves, hangs them in the sun to try to air them out and get them clean, but doesn't actually know how to take care of laundry. So he, he, the first thing you notice is that he's, he's really dirty even for this kind of part of town. Every once in a while, one of the locals will sort of take pity on him and, and offer to, to wash something and help him out. He's very not great at taking care of himself. Um, uh, busking um, with, uh, with story and song accompanied by, by the beat of his high drum, uh, just in exchange for the basics of survival to be allowed to sleep under an awning, um, that sort of thing. Uh, looks, um, looks sharp and is quite likable. Um, the local children have, have sort of made a point of taking care of him and, and protecting him. So he's often sort of surrounded by a group of, of uh, friendly ragamuffins um, who uh, uh, stand up to him against the, the, the bullies and, and the occasional bandit in this neighborhood. Um, sings beautifully, uh, though Ibn Akwan music is not uh, particularly melodic to anyone who is not themselves Ibn Akwan. Oh, okay. So it's particular to your, to your, uh, to the, uh, the culture's not, well, I guess in an Ibnaquan neighborhood, it would be, it would, it would find happy ears, but maybe not so familiar to the Mason folk. To, to, just about anybody else, it, it sounds like, well, like you would expect someone with a jackal's vocal cords, like who considers themselves to be a beautiful singer. Um, it just doesn't, it just doesn't roll well in the ears of other species. <laughs> oh, great. I love it. Okay. And, um, I am going to say that um, Oz has already met your contact. So uh, let me just pull that person up here. So when um, Isan arrives, <clears throat> Oz is sitting at a little, uh, the table is actually the fragment of a stone column um, and it's got a couple of um, wooden stumps around it. Uh, and um, um, Oz is sitting there uh, uh, across from Jazra El Majid, and uh, Isan, um, you show up around the same time that Lely. How does Beth? How does Lely make her entrance? Does she obviously climb down from a rooftop, or does she climb down like away from the scene and kind of arrive on on the ground? Or oh no, I think you know, I think Lely is running late as always, and so I think she like leaps from a rooftop and kind of like lands in the middle of the group and kind of skids <laughs> to <a> stop. <laughs> Great. So yeah, there's like a moment um, uh, the kids gathered around Oz kind of like uh, turn and, and gasp and one of them goes, it's only Laylee. And then um, <laughs> if in fact, I don't want to take that away from you, if in fact you're known in this neighborhood, are you known here? I think that's fine. Okay. Great. Uh, and um, and that's when Abdil shows up. This Yeah, uh, I actually I emerged from one of the nearby um, apartments or tenements, whatever sort of housing uh, is is in this neighborhood. Um, Abdil's already made the rounds of a number of the neighborhoods, um, both healing and seeing to the uh, gentle passing of a number of individuals who need it, but mostly in these sorts of um, uh, lower neighborhoods. So that's where he spends his time is moving. Yeah, that's where he's sort of making yeah. a circuit walking around. And so he happens just out of one of the nearby buildings. Uh, okay. And I don't know how Laylee managed to pull you guys together, but you've all met Laylee before and um, you were told to rendezvous at this point. So, um, uh, yeah. because this, this team was put together for this job, you've all responded uh, in this timely manner because it was organized ahead of time. Um, and uh, here you are, Oz, Oz had to ask around to, to, to find um, Jazra, um, uh, but here she is uh, sitting at this table um, uh, look with sort of a bemused look on her face. Um, And Oz, um, you, uh, so everybody sort of shows up on the scene and you're sitting right there with Jazra. So what do you do? Um, does, does, well, I guess I, I see if, if Jazra reacts to the, like recognizing everyone else or, or not. She uh, didn't even know who was gonna show up for this meeting. Like she hasn't met them. And you, right. you were the one who asked around and was like, I'm part of this group that's responding to your request and the rest of the team should be here shortly. So this is her first encounter with all of you. All right, uh, then I, I, I stand and uh, uh, gesture to like broadly with a, 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 a 
all my vocabulary has been cooked away uh, <laughs> with a ruffle of fabric uh, uh, from from one of the many wrappings I'm wearing and uh, gesture to to the the other adventurers and say here these are the the the, the brave uh, the brave few who will take your job, uh, Jazra al Majid, uh, and I, I, I say their names and I just make up lies about them that seem somewhat plausible based on seeing them since I've never seen them before, uh, never really met them before, uh, or I don't know them well. Um, but uh, uh, punctuating each uh, significant lie with a, a, a tap or three on the drum. <laughs> Great. Um, well, she kind of like takes in uh, your commentary and um, um, she has this kind of a bemused look on her, you know, she kind of, her, you know, her gaze passes across each of you in turn, like this scruffy little street, apparent street urchin who popped down off the roof, um, this, this really, I'm sorry, but sad looking Alfieri. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, what, 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 how is um, Abdil dressed? I, so um, scholars robes um, that are that are neatly kept if not if not uh, opulent oh, okay and so he's, he's but he is an aged Alfred so he's shuffling along you know leaning fairly heavily on this polished uh, or burled staff he has okay you've got a little staff great um, yeah so you know from one to the next and her 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 um, her expression kind of um, kind of opens with optimism when she sees Isan right so like oh here's somebody who might be able to do this job um, and um, she glances over and there's a, um, uh, a room and a kind of uh, a room accessible by a series of arches that open onto kind of a patio. And there's a figure standing in the doorway and uh, the figure nods. And then um, she stands and says, um, please come with me and leads you um, into this cool shaded uh, space on the other side of these arches away from the crowd of the spiral arch. And in there, there's an attendant who uh, has uh, prepared, there's tea and cold water, um, there's dates and other things. And um, she sort of has you all sit down at a, at a table that's been prepared for you. There's nothing, it's not like fancy, it's very simple, but like there are refreshments for you all. If it's very simple, uh, uh, Abdil might gesture to the attendant. Uh, a poor old vo's bones this morning. A bit of cinnamon, please. A stick of cinnamon. Um, there's a nod and uh, a retreat, and then shortly um, your your request is is met. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, who has an intelligence over thirteen? Thirteen. Or <laughs> okay. I do. Laylee, and also given your background, Laylee, right away you're like something's up. Like oh, we're sorry. in dry basin. This woman, there's an attendant. Like there's a whole different class thing happening here. Right, like this woman is a. You can tell right away she's not from around here. Um, she's affecting this kind of simplicity in her garb, but you can tell by the way she carries herself that in fact she's of a different um, strata. Um, and uh, the situation in here is is pared down, but like just just a quick assessment of the room. You're like, um, you know, this room has been cleaned up. Um, it's in it's in good shape, and that tea service came from somewhere else, right? So that's your kind of instant assessment of the situation. Uh, and she invites you to um, sit at the table and then uh, she keeps looking at Isan. <laughs> like her eyes are on Isan, um, uh, not in any kind of like uh, attraction way, but she's just like, he's a very striking figure. And like clearly like um, whatever she has in mind, she's like, you know, like like it's a very appealing uh, volunteer who has showed up for this job, and then kind of has to drag her attention away to focus on Lely, who she knows is the person who's kind of put this group together. Um, I told you I would find you a good group. Where are we going again? <laughs> well, I haven't told you all the details, but you'll be going to the Ribbonwood. There right. is something there I need you to seek out. And I need you to return to me with proof um, that you have, have been. If you return to me telling me what you saw there, I will know that you have actually made the journey. So all you need to do is return and describe to me what you found at this place. I will um, compensate you uh, uh, upfront for half of the expected 
um, time spent on the road and the balance will be paid upon your return. Does that Wait, make so sense? You just, um, we just go there and, and we look around and then come back and just say, well, we saw this and there were trees and there was rocks and there were sand critters and, and that, that's it. Uh, yes. The oh. specific place that I need you to go, there will be um, things there, signs, which uh, if you return and um, describe them properly to me, I will know you have been there. Um, Abdul, uh, who is sort of intermittently stirring his tea with a cinnamon stick and takes it out and gives a big crunch on the end with his sharp little teeth and is sort of grinding away at the, the piece of cinnamon bark. He says, signs, Ajat, signs? Is this what we're speaking of? And uh, so she turns her attention to you. And um, uh, I see that your, your, um, scholar, your scholar's robes were not taken from someone else's chair this morning. <laughs> no, uh, no. I can tell you only that um, the Ajat did at one point reside in the ribbon wood, some part of them. Uh, the specific signs that I ask you to that I that I uh, ask of you to find, I do not know what they are. I only know that if you return and describe what you see properly, I will know if you have been there. Hmm. And who's seen them before? If not you, then who? I have a scroll in my possession which speaks of a place that I have determined is there, somewhere on the dim ribbon, which is the river that runs through the ribbon wood. I have committed a passage to memory. This is the place I wish you to find. And she kind of like, um, she kind of looks off into the distance to recall uh, this bit of scroll that she memorized. Um, in the Ajat tongue, it says to walk one day upriver from the gathering place. And I have determined that gathering place is the translation of the ancient Ajat city of Tajame, which was on the coast, which was on the northern coast. It was one of their, it was their main port. So upriver from there, must they must be referring to the, the ribbon itself, to the river. So you walk one day upriver from the gathering place to where elbow touches knee. This is the part I don't understand. This is the part you will have to discover. And then when the father bids farewell, his honored son shall open the doors of his home to those of harmonious intention. We all know who the father is and Abdil, um, everybody knows, but Abdil in particular knows that the father refers to uh, either form of either aspect of, of Layamut. And for those of you who don't know, Layamut is the main kind of patriarchal God of Mason culture who, whose current incarnation is, um, is evil, not that that's like a publicly discussed thing, but in game terms, he's evil. But his original aspect in the ancient times was good, and his name was unpronounceable to me. But uh, Abdul Halat Hat Hab, there we go. And so, who, who sort of very quietly at the, the the father sort of whispers under his breath, "The circle spins still. <laughs> the circle spins still. The wheel to himself." Okay. He's he's mumbling and crunching, but yes. I, I, it looks like Laylee is expressing some confusion about what he's saying. But oh oh yeah. oh, my girl. Uh, well, uh, the the translation itself. Now, has she been speaking in Ajat or speaking in? Nobody speaks Ajat except for uh, like um, you know, like it's like one of those dead tongues. Like nobody speaks it. Like in fact, okay. it's it's rare to find somebody who can even understand it. Um. That's the providence of like the high church and, and sages of various kinds. Gotcha. She's speaking in common Mason. Would would the, the father bids farewell to the honored son? So the honor would I know who the honored son is since the student of um a student of what? What are you a student of? A, a student of uh, Thalat Hathab and Layamut. Like, and Thalat there... Hathab is the ancient aspect. So I'm going to say you can actually make our first roll of the game, which is to um, to know something. 
two. Uh, and that is a, sorry. Well, you can actually, let me see if Stab. I get this right. Yeah. When you introduce Idea. a potential fact, establish is just for introducing a potential fact. So um, this is a case where I actually know the answer here. It's been, mm -hmm. like I've figured it out on my end. So you, you can't really establish it. So that's find the answers. Mm -hmm. um, and just so you guys can see how that looks. Can you guys see that find answers on the left there? Is that yep. big enough for people to read? So that's the move that's being triggered when you seek more information than is readily apparent. So in this case, Abdil is actually seeking in his own knowledge base, right? Like, do I know who the honored son is? So you, Bob, that is a um, plus wisdom to discern, sense or discern, plus intelligence to recall or study, plus wisdom to ask around. Probably a recollection. Yeah, Probably so that's your, and what is your intelligence? Uh, so it is a 13, so I have a plus one. Great. Or you know, it is a 15. It still is a plus one. And I get a seven. Okay. The with judge's answer is with six to seven. Yeah. Sorry. The judge's answer is cryptic or incomplete, but they'll tell you how to learn more. Okay. So you know that Lyamut had um, uh, uh, several um, honored sons who were also gods in the pantheon. Um, you're not sure which one this refers to. You figure if, if there's one that has an association with the Ribbonwood or the river or this port city, that might be the one, um, but you can't, you'd have to do the way you would find out more was to actually do more focused research at um, either consult with a priest or, or go to like, um, you know, find some, some tomes of knowledge somewhere that might hold that information. So you, you don't know much more about that at this point. Well, my dear, well, my dear, if it has Ajat nearby, then Abdul Bark has a nose for that. I shall sniff it out. Um, okay. Um, I guess it's good that you're coming along then with that nose and everything. <laughs> um, uh, so is there anything else we need to know then? Uh, or it's just that, the, the riddle and and then we just tell you what we see and come back? Yes, and our, when you come back, our meeting will be in the truth market so that I can be sure that what you say is, is, is honest. And you guys all know that on the, within the square of the truth market, which is the main marketplace of the town, no lie can be spoken. There's an ancient enchantment on that place that makes it a place where uh, trading is honest. Um, like it or not. So she's saying that when you do return, you will speak to her there about what you found. And that's, that's an actual thing, not just a custom, right? Uh, as far as everybody knows, it's an actual thing. You cannot, you cannot tell a lie in the truth market. Uh, that seems fair, I guess. It does it, doesn't it? I, I certainly, um, I have my doubts about this whole thing. I, I no t great tales were ever ever built on go look at the the symbols and then come back. I I, I mean I'm certain that um, that Oz over here is is c conducting a poem already. I just um, how am how how am I supposed to build a legacy on this? I don't. I this is this. Is there some kind of great beast near the symbols that I may hunt? Oh, well, this is an adventure, don't you see? I mean, all great stories, they have um, heroes going out and and solving riddles and there are always uh, monsters and uh, to kill and interesting people to meet and that's what this is. Plus so I'm sure old... it's going to be exciting. Some great eagle will probably swoop down and try to eat poor Abdil Bark's old bones. You can fight that beast off. Well, one can hope. One can hope for a great eagle that I can fight off. I, 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 I just, I, I'm hopeful that uh, that there will be a great eagle. I, I let's, I yes, uh, I believe. Yes, th there's always a small step on every great journey. We will. But I'm certain by nightfall um, we will be heroes of some fashion. I, I hope I didn't, uh, you know, spend all my money in coming to the Western Wild to, um, you know, just go look at some symbols. That's that's all I ask. I, I um, this armor was very expensive. 
Um, Abdul will turn. You hear, his armor is very expensive, and I have a very expensive cinnamon habit, and Lele needs much cleaning of her pure lace collar. Uh, surely such a wise and mm, lucky woman such as yourself can perhaps provide a bit additional for us poor travelers seeking by, out wisdom for her. By my estimation, the journey there and back should take you a total of eight days. This uh, will amount to 56 kate, uh, 28 up front. There, there are four of you, so that would be uh, seven kate a piece now. And she um, gestures towards the attendant and the attendant um, brings over a, um, a, a, a small uh, uh, purse and um, there's a clink as it kind of is set on the table in front of you. Surely for those such as yourself, even, and she looks pointedly at Isan, um, even those who are destined for greater fortune and glory, um, seven pieces of silver uh, uh, could do much to um, pad out your evenings. I, I have, a, I have a, a very, I have a certain lifestyle to upkeep. Um, and, and thus far, the silver does not go as far as, as I, um, you know, recall it going. Um, and this maintenance um, requires, it, it requires a lot of work when you don't have people helping you anymore. Um, and I, I certainly can't, can't build my greatness um, without a, a little bit of funds. I see. So you take the silver, right? Uh, I mean, because if you're not, I'll take your share. Oh, oh no! I, I will take the silver. Um, the, 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 more, the purse but... is emptied out and divided into four different stacks of seven coins each. Nobody's taken them yet, unless you want to right now, Isan. But now the coins have been divided up into to four uh, stacks. But it sounds like Abdil's trying to bargain, and Isan is maybe mm -hmm. wants a little more. Also, is that fair? Yes. Um, so let's yes. have Abdil roll to negotiate, and you get to take oh, plus gosh. one because Isan is helping you. It could be the other way around. I mean, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whichever way you guys want. To speak, I, I think actually. Isan made the made the most uh, made the most uh, compelling point, but Abdil is over there looking looking small and frail, and continues to ask for more cinnamon sticks. So he's probably getting another fifteen silver and cinnamon off the side, <laughs> but still. Oz is hasty and thus has both paws on the pile of coins, but it's like looking back and forth to the rest of the party, trying to, to figure out what to do next. Um, uh, so Isan, you're proposing that perhaps, are you proposing an overall uh, increase in the, um, the payment here? Are you proposing uh, more up front? What's your proposal? Oh, it's got some, some adventure bombing going on. Some allies no, no, no have problem, shown up no to the party. Uh, let's have Abdil do it. Then. Uh, yes, very well, very well. So uh, you can actually use intelligence to negotiate if you appeal to their sense of reason. Um, uh, yes, so I will. I will um, uh, say a quick, a quick uh, prayer to Liamut, the god of greed, and uh, will begin to to. Tick off, to tick off the various items. I can see my friend is wearing his his the gorget or whatever he has, all the different pieces of armor. Sure, surely, as he says, the maintenance is quite expensive. I know that uh, El Pan, the, the armor polisher, charges at least two silver now for a proper polish. Larceny, I say. Great, so you get to roll your intelligence modifier plus one for Isan's help. Uh, so a nine. Got a nine. They'll do it, but only if you concede something meaningful in return. And to know that I am making this argument in good faith, I ask for no more for myself, but more for my companions. Oh, oh all right. Um, an, honest, an honest offer may be uh, split amongst them. Okay, great. I think the end of that negotiation, there's a little bit of back and forth after that. And um, three more coins are placed on top of the stacks of their stacks. So your stack is still seven, everybody else has 10. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and um, she says, um, the day grows late, I have business to attend to. You return when you return. At whatever point you come back, uh, you will reach me here. And she gestures to the attendant. Um, and we will uh, meet in the truth market. We'll be back soon. Um, don't worry, you picked the right people. <laughs> I think also, can I take the rest of the dates if you're not gonna eat them? Um, yeah, she sort of uh, pushes the bowl towards you. I think I shove them in my pocket. I get two more cinnamon sticks for the road. <laughs> <laughs> Load up. <laughs> There's the a buffet. Dates are probably... <laughs> <laughs> the dates are probably one of the very small amount of things that, that Oz hasn't eaten during this conversation. You know, when you look over that, like all the little finger bowls are now sitting in front of Oz and it's just crumbs all over. His face. <laughs> uh, great. Okay. So, um, anybody have anything else they need to need from, um, your, your boss, your, uh, your, 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 uh, your contact here. So, so Jason, just so I have it clear, was it Jazra who was talking to us or Jazra's? Um... It was Jazra talking the whole time. It was Jazra. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. She, is... she was not, it's not beneath her. It was clearly not beneath her to just have a conversation with you. She, she is from some other strata, but um, it wasn't like she was like a, aloof and above it all. She was having a pretty straightforward conversation. With you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. So let's see here. And so an eight day journey, right? And so we need to be, we need to be um, on top of our rations, that sort of thing for the yep. expedition. Did anybody, everybody have any rations on them? Yeah, I started with some, but the thing, the thing that was a little confusing. So it said I got a D6 you know, number of rations, right. which clear enough but then i know in the um in the mark um sorry marketplace page it was saying that each ration has seven uses something sorry like that or? so the trail rations is the whole unit the whole thing and then each one each one of those has seven you know a week's worth of of food okay. so one ration is one day's worth of food um and before you leave without even this wasn't part of the conversation at all but the attendant actually gives each of you a little packet um, that has a week's worth of food in it. So you can all add to your gear, um, uh, just write on your gear list, write rations. If you don't already have that, if you already have rations, then add seven uses. And if you don't just add rations, seven uses and each seven uses uh, weighs one. So keep track of that there. One weight for each. For each unit of seven and-, and Oh, any, for each unit of seven. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry, a unit of seven is confusing because a unit is one piece of that. <laughs> each each packet, each group of seven, yeah, is worth that. Okay. Um, so from here, to get to the Ribbonwood, you leave through Fortune's Gate at the north end. Of, sorry, the west end of town. And um, uh, who among you would have done their homework in terms of crossing terrain, like figuring out where where you need to go? to get to the dim ribbon. Say not up deal, shake it. Okay, he's on, yeah. So you've done your homework. So you know that you're gonna go out of Fortune's Gate. You're gonna descend into the kind of hilly area around Moon Hadir. You're gonna pass, um, you're gonna head west and you're basically gonna go around um, the foothills of Fortress Ridge. So you're gonna go west of Moon Hadir. Uh, can you guys see my cursor on the, on the map? Yeah. Yep. So you're going to go this way, and then you can see this little thing here is the um, the headwaters of the Dim Ribbon. Do I have that right? Is headwaters the source of the river, or is headwaters where it comes out? Headwaters is the source. Okay, great. So you're going to um, go along the foothills of Fortress Ridge until you hit the headwaters of the Dim Ribbon, and then you're going to follow the ribbon downstream. Now, how you interpret this the passage that um, uh, that she referred to is up to you, but it, it seems like um, this this spot is one day's journey upriver from where the river hits the ocean. So 
Um, and in Izan's estimation, and from asking around, I don't think Izan spent a lot of time out in the wilderness here. Is that fair? Yeah. Pretty, pretty <laughs> near to the area? Yes. Um, and it's, uh, it's a much different climate than what you're used to. Tanrilar is um, a drier, hotter uh, place. Um, just south of here, it gets kind of um, uh, uh, dry and hot. But uh, here in Fortress Ridge in this area, it's, it's more temperate and um, cooler overall. So it's one day's trip from Moon Hadir to the headwaters, and then you'll be going um, downstream from there. Any questions or final preparations before you hit the road? Um, yeah, so Oz would have spent the time not necessarily learning anything practical about navigating the river down the Ribbonwood or, or that, but would have uh, talked to everyone who would be willing to listen about stories about the Ribbonwood, uh, mm. legends and, and sort of folklore. Okay, great. Is there anything, um, so are you trying to find any particular answers or are you just sort of setting that up so that when at times when you could recall that when? Yeah, I think partly, yeah. And then I, I'm trying to remember how to, to get things into my repertoire as a bard. You just uh, make them up. <laughs> okay, so that's, so I'm, I'm, I'm preempting uh, a repertoire uh, set up specifically about some of the things we might encounter while we're out there. Oh, nice. So uh, there may be a song or a, or a poem or something that you've uh, studied that you can pull out when you need it. Yeah. Uh, Oz has a really good sense of his limitations. Uh, he cannot navigate, he cannot lead an adventure, but okay. he has a really good head for songs and stories. Okay, so. sweet. Awesome. Uh, now, did, was the, did the name the Knaves? No, that's a different thing. That's oh, sorry. Knaves don't, yeah, the Knaves don't doesn't come into play. That's a different here. thing. Yeah. Different thing. Um, all right, so let's uh, organize the party. When you're about to travel or explore as a group, take a moment to decide how the party is organized, who's on lookout, who's bringing up the rear, et cetera. There are four of you. So if we think in terms of like a simple um, single file, which could change depending on the situation, but who uh, will be your point person? You guys can discuss and make suggestions and then it's up to Laylee to make the call based on, um, on what you say. I mean, probably the guy with armor. <laughs> I was going to say, Isan will gladly, um, you know, and, and pluckily lead the way as they, uh, you know, head down, head down the road, um, fully ready for trouble, um, any large, looking out for any large eagles, um, <laughs> and reassuring Abdul as, <laughs> as they go um, that Isan um, has a sharp eye and is a master of the bow. Um, awesome. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Take and, care uh, of any large eagles. <laughs> <laughs> and who would be bringing up the rear, do we think? Who's a good person to have in the back? Do you want some? So Isan's clearly the most equipped for, for fighting. Um, we have the smallest people here. I mean, nobody's really big besides our, uh, our fighter. Um, Abdil and Lily are on the small side, and Oz is like, Adam, how big do you picture Oz being? Like, I, I don't know how big Ibnaquans are generally, but he's on the small end of 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 that. Okay. So, so if they're if they're a tall people, then he's probably seems sort of normal for a human. But if okay. they're if they're human sized, he would be short. So you get to establish that because that has not oh, okay. actually been established. You get to decide right now for all Ibanaquans going forward. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> He's I, only I six that, two. I, I got the impression of the, yeah, I got the impression <laughs> that they're quite tall, right? Okay, just cool. I, and I don't know why that is, but I think it's because dog people are usually big, hulking kind of. But like, jackals are small. Let's say they're slightly taller than than but, humans. Okay. In the setting. Cool. Great. Okay. And you're on the small side of that, so you're maybe yeah. Okay. Well, like depending on yeah, I don't know what the average human is in this setting either. Uh, so slightly smaller than the Yeah, I'm going to say the average human is like 5'8". So. Okay. So yeah, so, so Oz is like 5'6", okay. which is tiny for an Ibnaco. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and uh, does, what, is Oz armed? Uh, he has a knife, uh, which is a decent iron knife that he brought from home. And a, uh, uh, a uh, have another, oh, and a sling. <laughs> nice. But I don't think I have any ammunition for this thing. I think I forgot to buy rounds. 
Oh, we can just we can just give you those. Um, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you can, Otherwise, you can it's always a handful of rocks. I mean, no, I mean a handful of rocks is actually even better, right? Maybe on the way you're gathering them up because you couldn't afford the nice weighted, you know, perfectly balanced link stones. So there may be, um, yeah. So that's actually great. Why don't you be gathering that up? And um, okay. Laylee, how is Laylee armed? Uh, she's got a dagger and a sling. Nice. And, a, and I actually did splurge for strict springs, uh, sling stones. Ooh, ooh, okay. Like cool. my very, very meager like purse, which is one of the reasons I have very little money, even less money than Great. you might think. So, oh, and also, everybody... I'm happy to... so I say, also, I'm happy to take up the rear actually. Okay, Laylee in the back. And then we'll just say Abdil and Oz in the middle there. Specific order will matter when we get down to it. Um, and uh, Abdil, you got your little walking stick staff. Yeah, leaning sort of heavily on it again, sort of gnarled and burled. And uh, but his his other hand, uh, while he sings a little a little uh, hymn, he's sort of stroking this um, uh, belt pouch, and sometimes speaking to himself or seemingly speaking to the the belt pouch. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Muttering. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> uh, all right. And we, we already know that Isan has not only scale armor, but a buckler, a scimitar, and a bow. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Isan is actually a, a longbow fighter. Oh, oh um, no way. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so that that is Isan's favorite weapon is the longbow. Cool. Um, okay. And background was like hunter was one of the things that came up. Yeah, Scouter Hunter was one of the roles in the background. Oh, right, so, so you're totally fantastic. in the front of this group. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and as the person who is in front, you're going to make our first um, set out roll. Um, when you embark on a journey, say where you're headed. Um, the judge will indicate one to three potential routes. In this case, we just got the one route to the headwaters. Um, this area is actually uh, safe, so it's not um, a particularly dangerous area. Sorry, it's unsafe because um, you, you are on the edge of the frontier, but it's not um, civilized roads that you're passing down. So this near Moon Hadir, it's unsafe. On any of the roads, it's, it's actually safe, and that matters because there's a different modifier depending on the safety of an area. So we're going to have, I, I'm going to rotate you guys through this every time this move comes up, but the first roll will be to Isan um, for this first leg of the journey to um, the river. And when you roll this set out, it's just 2d6 plus the safety modifier. Um, so for an unsafe area, it's plus two. So you're gonna roll 2d6 plus two. That is a nine. Uh, there's an incident at some point along the way. The judge will say when, where, and what. And then Seth, if you would roll a d12 to see what kind of incident we're looking at here. Absolutely. Told you there'd be an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 10. Okay. Okay. Um, who? <laughs> Laylee, you've got a luck of four. <laughs> nice one, guys. Here we go. What is, uh, tell me what's in your, how are you carrying your stuff? What's it in? Is it like in a pack or a pouch? Is it in your pockets? Um, I think it's important to mention that Lily does not have much stuff <laughs> yep. because she has like she has nothing. And I think what she does have is um, she's got like a, a, like two like small pouches like on a belt around her waist and like a dagger like her daggers like uh, on that belt as well. And that's it. Okay, so she's got the she got the sling stones. She's got a sling there. The coins, um, dagger, and I've got a set of lock picks, and that's Ooh, really it. nice. Great. Um, yeah, so I'm going to say you're about, you guys have stopped, so you stop for a, um, there's like a, there's no, there's like maybe some animal trails here, but there's no actual human foot trails, right? Um, uh, it's like open, um, actually, I think I have a picture I can show you what this looks like. So this is what the landscape around Moon Hadir looks like. <clears throat> um, this would be, as you leave to the west, this would be looking south towards the Ageless Mountains in the far distance there. So it's um, uh, wooded hills along the, the nearby waterways. There's uh, a lot of farming because Moonhunter needs uh, a lot of um, food to, to keep going. 
and you're um, <clears throat> moving north along these um, these red rocky hills, and you have a midday break for for refreshment and whatnot. People fill up their their water skins out. There's like a there's like a stream running down the mountainside. People fill up, and you guys take a break, and then you get back um, on the road. And about mid afternoon, um, uh, uh, Laylee, the the heel on your right boot breaks off. Oh. So there's really nice boots. Perhaps your most prized possession. I don't know. Maybe there's something else somewhere that's yeah. really great. But those bronze-toed boots um, have uh, kind of reached the end of their uh, of their usefulness. Or maybe they haven't reached their end, but they would need a repair in order to like uh, be continued to use. So that happens. What what does that look like? Um, I mean, I think she trips. Right. Uh... At, at like, as like, as, as the, the heel kind of comes and done and like, uh, you know, she kind of, uh, who's in front of her? I guess it's Abdil. Like she'll start, she's kind of stumbles forward into him, uh, you know, uh, and kind of, cr you know, crashes against his, his walking stick. Um, he, he squeaks loudly. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, huh? oh. oh, my dear. Yeah, I, I, are you fine? Is your ankle turned? No, this is just, well, this is not good. Um, my shoe's destroyed. Yeah. I mean, I guess that, well, well, I guess that like at the start of every great adventure, there's always something that goes wrong, right? Isn't that how it is in stories? And so, um, so maybe that's this. And, and if this is the only thing that's going to go wrong, then, well, that's not too bad at all now, is it? Um, I guess, um, Maybe I'll just try to, I don't know, find the bottom of my shoe or something. Um, and I'll try to like, I'll rip something off like, you know, one of my, like my shirt and like, I'll try to like tie the, the, the bottom of the shoe on. My dear, my dear. In, in oh. many years of healing bodies, I must say in some instances, mm, just binding it back together will not do instead one needs the balance, break off the heel of the other side, and then you shall be walking straight. Um, you want me to destroy my other shoe? <laughs> no, make them equal yet again. Um, I guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, uh all right, if, if you think so. Um, I think that's actually really good advice. Well, thanks. Uh, and I'll do that, actually. Aha! Uh -huh. um, and it's not ideal, I guess, but at least now I'm not gonna trip. So we'll be fine, right? Ah, indeed, indeed. And this shall be the tragedy from which we shall find great victory. I am sure you are right. Yes, I told you. <laughs> See, nothing else can go wrong after this. Mm -hmm. It's a sign that we are destined, that this truly is the worst that is happening to us in the first day. Um, I'm certain Oz is already composing the ballad to it as we speak. Um, the evening of the heel. Yes, yes, yes. But, but unfortunately, uh, according to the rules of classical poetry, three more things have to go wrong before anything can go right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, and those are no; those are never as um, bad as the first thing, right? That's how these stories usually play out. It's they go in threes, absolutely. I remember that. Um, and then you know, the next thing that happened is certainly going to be um, better. Well, it depends right? on whether this is a tragedy or a comedy. Are any of you planning to get married? <laughs> Never. Never mind. We'll figure it out. Never. <laughs> I love that. I love the evening of the heels as evening itself comes on. Ah. <laughs> and the heels are even. That's some, that's some good stuff right there. Sorry. All right. I'm going to say that Abdil and Laylee, you guys can each take a bond with the other because that was like a, a, a positive oh. moment that just oh, normally wonderful. you would keep company and roll some dice, but I feel like that was a great uh, exchange there where that wasn't necessary. So right write the name of the other character in your bonds area and draw a little circle to indicate that you have one bond with them. And you can mark that at any time when you wanna help somebody to give them an extra, extra bonus there. 
Um, so uh, as the sun's going down, you guys reach the headwaters of the ribbon and you're going to set up camp and pass the night. Um, Oz, can you tell us one thing you do when you're sort of preparing to kind of uh, hunker down um, for the evening? Any kind of prep preparation you take or? Hmm. Uh, yeah, actually, um, I have a tiny vial of, uh, of olive oil and I put like just two drops on the skin of my drum and, and massage it in and then cover it and then sleep. Nice. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> um, uh, so, and are you guys going to have a, lately, I'm going to ask the leader here, or you may defer to somebody else if you wish, but will you guys have a campfire tonight or will you have none? The advantage to a campfire is that uh, it's warmth and um, beasts may avoid you, avoid you because of the light. Um, uh, but if uh, it also draws the attention of intelligent creatures, right? So that's the, 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 the trade-off for having a campfire. Well, of course we're going to have a campfire. Okay. I mean, if Oz is going to, Oz has his drum and he's going to play the music for us because well, that's what you do when you're on an adventure. So, of course. So are you expecting a, a tune from Oz? Well, isn't he going to? I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course. Does? <laughs> of course, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm on the trip. Great. So, uh, so dead, deadfall is collected from the, the trees surrounding. So you're now at the headwaters. It's still rocky train up here and you're looking down as the sun is uh, dipping into the west. Um, you actually see from this height, you're looking down on the ribbon wood, um, which is uh, a cedar forest extending out for miles toward the coast. Um, so the sun is setting, you guys are, you know, there's the pleasant sound of the river, plenty of fresh water. Um, and food is being cooked up and people are eating um, and getting ready to bed down and Oz is going to, uh, what kind of, what kind of, uh, how does Oz uh, close um, the evening? It's the first night, it's a, it's a big adventure, so probably something uh, rousing and, and exciting to keep people keep focused on, on the adventure. So um, it's, a, it's a story, it's kind of a, it's kind of a funny song um about a, a folk hero uh from wherever it is that i'm from uh <laughs> the sort of the t uh oh tanrilar um, sorry tanrilar tanrilar yes uh also a tanrilar folk hero who um uh in in the classic uh of like village folk heroes he he's not that smart but he's good-hearted um, and he always has the right thing uh, in mind when he sets out in his adventures and then everything goes wrong, but he sort of ends up happy uh, at the end. Everything sort of sets right almost as much by fluke as by good fortune or uh, good, uh, good skills. Now, are you actually going to um, uh, perform that, like use your move to perform? Yeah. To give, give people some potential uh, helpful help in the future? Sure. Uh, perform. I this your carefully one part. Hey, I can I can I can walk you through that if you want. If okay. You yeah. Okay. So I'll let everybody else see what's going on here. Here's the Bard's playbook. Oh, and just so you know, you're gonna bed down. You're gonna roll the pass tonight. We'll take a break, and then we'll do the second leg of the journey. Okay. Um. So to perform, it says, <clears throat> when you perform a piece from your repertoire. Oh yeah. Pay one art to play to an audience of one listener, or two art to pay to an audience of every listener with an earshot. So it sounds like you're playing to everyone and your current yep. art is equal to your uh is intelligence wisdom or charisma higher for you uh charisma you sounded like a very likable fellow um yeah Chris, charisma is my, by, by my best stuff. and your modifier for it is one okay so you have a total of two art right now yeah um so if you spend both art you can play to everyone who's at the campfire okay uh and then you choose one or more effects from the list below explain how the piece possesses those effects um, based on its title. Oh, okay. And the effects um, are um, motivating. People listening can take plus one forward to the next relevant action. Rousing, um, that's not, doesn't apply because it helps people recover from fear, doubt, or despondency. Um, so it looks like the best thing, oh yeah, it's, it's really motivating is the thing. That's, and this is the only one that applies. So we don't have to go through all the different options. So if you make this roll, um, everybody listening will take plus one forward to their next roll that relates to the song that you're singing. 
Okay. Um, so the story is uh, it's called. Um, uh, sorry, I just googled Turkish folk tales and tried to, to <laughs> yes, find go, one. Yes, go, go, go. That sort of fit. Uh, we're gonna call it um, uh, the Simpleton and the Seven Dragons. Nice. And, uh, and like I said, yeah. So the, the Simpleton is this. He's a folk hero. He he gets himself in into difficult situations. Things don't always go right for him, especially at the beginning. Always three negative things happen at the beginning of the story, um, but uh, but he always he always stumbles upon the right thing by virtue of just being very virtuous and very dedicated to uh, to his task and his friends. So he's the he's the paragon of um, pleasant, um, but not always intelligent uh, fortitude. Okay. Okay. Great. So it's actually going to be you get to decide then, or we make the argument. Whenever somebody makes a roll after this song tomorrow, when you guys are or whenever, you get to sort of make the argument as to how this this song might have might have helped them, or they can say it themselves how that goes. Yeah. Okay. And um, so, so I roll your charisma. Yeah, roll plus your charisma modifier. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's not great. That's a six. Okay. <laughs> I liked the barking part. <laughs> um, it says pay two art to apply one of the chosen effects to your audience and the judge makes a move so you're out of art <laughs> like the barking yeah. part maybe that's the issue is you've got an audience of non ibnaquins here <laughs> we're like trying to like it's all lost in translation <laughs> it's sort of weird music <laughs> yeah and, and I guess if you don't speak because uh, it, it the song would also be in in Tanrilar, so I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have a chance to translate it yet. So it's it's just a lot of like, um, yeah, howling and and yapping, and and when I, and like I finished up with the big drum, I'm like, it sounds better when there's a chorus. I'll, I'll turn to to Lele and say, I didn't hear any dragons in that. Were there supposed to be dragons? Um, I thought so, but uh, but. Yeah, I just, it just sounded like street dogs howling at the moon and yeah, but, but we should applaud. <laughs> nice. I, I, I especially love the, the ooh, ooh, ooh part. That was, that was quite stunning. I, I absolutely lovely. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was riveting. Um, <clears throat> yes. The dragons were an allegory. <laughs> Ah. Oh, so there were real uh, dragons? I oh, much no. prefer real dragons. It's just... <laughs> um, Adam, if I find that... one, I, I won't be upset. Uh, I have not... And this makes me notice that on a six or less, there's there should be an extra clause there So um, that I need to change for the next iteration, which is that you get to mark charisma. So if you look at okay. the front page of your character sheet, every ability score has uh, five little bubbles along the top of it. Right. That first box and you mark one of those and when that fills up your ability actually increases so i, I paid the two art just to play that's right and, and so i can't further pay any more to get the effect because you're just, all out yep because i'm out okay yep. and i'm going to say and the move i get to make a move also and i'm going to say because of the context my move is that in order for you to um uh play a song <laughs> that these guys can understand okay no in order to play this song Right, you've already got this song in your repertoire, and it's in Tanrilari, <laughs> and nobody here right. knows Tanrilari. But maybe in the future you'll go adventuring with some fellow Obnaquins. Who knows? <laughs> um, to play this song for these people, you need to take some time to like learn the translation. Right, work okay. with. It seems like you have a, 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 a Abdul Bark might be the ideal person to uh, to help you translate the words. So that would mean whatever it means in game for you to do that. But in order to play this song for these people, you're gonna to have to work with Abdul to make that happen. Okay. Um, and then just just while you're iterating, um, it might be if you if you reverse the clauses in the sentence as it exists, the yeah. judge makes a move, and and you may pay two art because the way it reads now to to me intuitively, I thought that you don't make a move unless I can also pay the two art. Okay, got it. Thank but you. I, yes, like, I see. Perfect. I see what you're saying. It makes sense, but it, it's because that that comma is a uh, yep. Ambiguous. Absolutely, that's exactly the kind of feedback that is super helpful. Thank you. Making a note. All right. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna roll it past the night. <clears throat> Do 
out of here. And for this, uh, just going to the top of the order here, this is again, just like set out, it's not a move relevant to any particular character, it's for the whole party. So I'm gonna ask um, Abdil to make this roll. Um, ba -bum. And when we roll to pass the night, and then, here we go. When you settle into sleep, set the watch order and choose someone to roll safety. So as noted, safety is plus two. Um, uh, anybody have any preference about who has which watch? Isan, you're the big fighter dude. Do you think there's a time of night when that? Uh... This armor is not easy to get in and out of. So Isan will probably <laughs> take first watch um, so that they can uh, go about their long kind of nighttime routine. Okay. to like, you know, get out of the armor, oil it, and wrap it, um, and, you know, get it to preserve it as best they can. Great. So I'll suggest that um, watch order is same as marching order unless somebody has an objection. Is that cool? Um, so that'd be Isan, Abdil, Oz, and then Laylee in the morning. Does that work? Okay, cool. Um, and then, uh, Bob, would you roll plus safety? So roll 2d6 plus 2. Yep, and I got an eight. Everyone gets restful sleep. Those who ate and drank the night before each choose one benefit from the list below. So everybody marks a ration, first of all. Should have done that when we um, in the previous step. So make sure to mark that off. And nobody is down on ability or hit points. So the advantage you get is you take plus one forward to your first roll of the next day. Because you wake refreshed and ready for action. So whatever that role is, doesn't matter what it is, you get to get plus one to it. And then whether the plus one from the um, um, the seven, the simpleton and the seven dragons applies will be a different uh, conversation. Uh, so the day looks good to you so far and we will take a 10 minute break. Well, I think it doesn't because I, I failed the role, right? So it doesn't apply regardless. Oh, sorry. Yes, 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 sorry. Yes, nope, <laughs> did not work. And is art one of the things I can get back from, from that? Yes, it's quite cool. easy. All you have to do is like take, you just have to describe yourself, taking a moment to like tune your instrument and hum a little bit to yourself. It just can't be in the middle of a fight, essentially. Okay. So you could wake up in the morning before people go to bed at night and you get you get your art back when you do that. It's described at the top of that, um, of that page. Oh, I see it. Somewhere in that, in that section there. All right, anybody, everybody good with taking a break? Okay. Sure. All right, 10 minutes.
All right. <clears throat> Adam, I just saw your message on the Discord. I'm sorry that I did not respond to it. <laughs> turn it turn it okay. We were yeah, so I um it's it's obviously hotter inside than it is outside because there's just like there's no air circulation in here. Um and this house was built for a climate that had well, so prior to this year, Calgary had on average five days above 30 degrees every day. Like our our summer heat is like 28, 29. And it's it's dry. So this heat wave, we've now had already five days above 30. Today was 37. We've got another couple of those coming. It's not going below 20 any any given night. So the house isn't cooling off at night either. Oh wow. Um, we have one little floor unit AC um, that's you know designed for like a 400 square foot bedroom. Um, but so we're all in the living room today with the AC running. I'm working downstairs, but I had to go upstairs for a, a conference call that was supposed to be for an hour from one to two. It ended up running from one to almost three. Um, I just I absolutely roasted. My core temperature was through the roof. And uh, I was thinking if I have to go back into that office today, I like I might literally die. Oh my it's, God. It's, I was really scared. Wow. But also my computer, like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a big, my computer is like a big gaming computer. It gets hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it might not just from video chat, but if the air temperature is already 35, 36 degrees, yeah. um, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So luckily <laughs> I, I managed to cobble together. So I have, I have my character sheet and the book like there or the rule stuff on my Chromebook because zoom hates my Chromebook. And then I've got zoom running on my phone. Up oh my here. God. So, it's it's functional. It's ugly well, but functional. Your efforts are appreciated. Thank you for. Yeah, I'm excited. I've always I've always wanted ever since I read about the West Marches idea, like back in like 2011 or something. I've always wanted to play in a game, but it's just never the opportunity's never arisen. Yeah. And I, I ran a solo West Marches for like my roommate back in like 2009, I think, and it was pretty good. But it's very easy to West Marches for one person. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, and uh but yeah other than that so it, it was exciting and then just the opportunity to play this game since i've kind of heard a lot about it um through buzz but um i don't just given the early starts i actually don't know if i'll be able to keep with it yeah um because i know it's a reasonable start time for you but it's it's really early for me we like cleared the supper dishes ran upstairs oh, threw up them in a tub of cold water and then like right to bed yeah well, I mean, the whole idea is like modular, drop in, drop out, depending on your schedule. So, yeah, um, of course, we want to see more of Oz and his well-oiled drum, <laughs> but whatever works for your schedule. Yeah. On the topic of the well-oiled drum, if we reverse the order in which things happen, because the drum oiling was supposed to be the last thing I did before bed. Yes, right. And that then, could totally count. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, arguably, I would have my heart back. Cool. That's what it takes. It's some communion with the drum. Yeah um all right so next morning and we're moving along so we got like about an hour before you're gonna have to probably turn back to town an hour of our time so we're gonna um uh this next leg is actually a two and a half day leg to get to uh the general area where you're supposed to be going um so that's one roll for two and a half days of travel and um this roll is going so everybody wakes up in the morning um pulls their stuff together pours water on the fire <clears throat> and then looking down into this cedar forest you're you're ready to set out basically following the course of the river um through the trees um so for this leg i'm gonna ask uh beth to roll uh 2d6 now you're entering the ribbon wood which is dangerous territory so in this case it's uh, a plus one modifier as you set out I'll try not to fuck this up for everyone <laughs> luckily it's not using your luck I know. Uh, I did not fuck this up for everyone. So I got five plus one is 11. Two fives plus one is 11. Oh, great. Yeah. Fantastic. You complete the leg in good time. And for each day of travel, each member consumes one ration and heals. Uh, nobody's down any points. So um, everybody consumes. Let's see, this is two and a half days. So just mark off two rations each. So the ribbon wood is. Um, uh, um, lots of tall uh, wind, um, wind, what's the word I'm looking for? 
it's, it's a it's a on the hilltops it's windy weather so the trees have been kind of distorted by the wind somewhat um red bark the earth around here is also um very red there's lots of um kind of um uh, ground cover, but there are patches of like red rock and earth uh, visible through it. Um, oh yeah, um, and uh, Seth, would you check weather, please? That's two d six, no modifier. That is a seven. Um, okay, so it's about the same. Another beautiful sunny. Um, uh, uh, and this lasts for the whole this whole leg. Beautiful sunny weather. Um, uh, the 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 woods smell like cedar, right? So it's like this very rich kind of sweet, um, fragrant um, smell. I don't think, I think this is probably the most unusual for our people from Southern um, climes where, the, where there's probably not these kind of trees. Um, it is uh, cool weather and very easy going. You're finding your way down along um, the river itself, which looks somewhat like this. Um, so no big rapids or um, difficult uh, uh, terrain to cross, really. Um, hey, Jason, I'd like to establish something. Yeah. I have an inkling that um, cedar, cedar wood, cedar forest is features in the the, the worship of the Ajat gods or sort of the gods we've inherited. The cedar, the cedar woods holds a special significance. And walking through it, um, walking through this forest in particular with the smells and the, the sort of damp in the air um, and the, the clear morning sky, I think Abdil is reflecting on um, the cedar being the, the place of the gods. Uh, great, so what are you, are you just trying to establish that simple fact? establish it and establish maybe his knowledge of this this large you know the interconnectivity of the gods and the place they live and um, sort of understanding the symbolism of the cedar woods so are you are are you well so there's finding answers which is trying to understand something that uh, uh, mm. you, you don't you know what I mean like you're, 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 yeah you're, I'm establishing that there are that maybe as we're walking that I'm seeing there are maybe carvings in the trees or there you can see how some of the trees were grown in such a way that they do look like they're a bit windswept but perhaps they were cultivated or tended in a certain oh, way. Oh okay so not only is the, are the cedar do the cedar woods have some kind of religious significance but that there are signs that the Ajat um, or, or even recent mm -hmm. residents have um, uh, cultivated them to, right. to some end. Yeah I'll let you establish that for sure. All right. Uh, I don't think I get. Oh no, I have a plus one from being well rested. Does that? Is yeah, that... that's right. Yep. Yeah. And then you get that roll for this. If that's what you want to spend. On. <laughs> sure. Uh, and I get a, a good solid eight. Okay. You're right, but there's a caveat or complication of the judge's choosing. Um. So this, this is what you have read, and where have you or or heard? Like, what is it? What is the source of this knowledge that you have? Is it the kind of thing where like you learned from a um, um, uh, like a holy sage? Is it research? I, I learned it. I learned it from my from my master. Um, I learned it from my master. Okay, so you studied under someone who yes. Is this how you also learned your magic? Timbal, yeah, Timbal. Timbal, okay. Um, yeah, so this is what you know. You've read this, and or, or your master has taught you this. And there are in Moon Hadir and elsewhere, there are, um, uh, you know, um, charms or 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 figures carved from cedar wood, and they have a particular significance in different in different rites. Um, and you know there are stories about how, yes, the trees were carved and um, perhaps cultivated to who knows to who knows what end, or maybe there's even stories about how they were cultivated and why. But um, you, in in the course of this journey down the the river, you see no um, evidence of it. Um, these are the stories you've heard, but you're and you you're, you know you're scanning all the trees, you're taking a moment to. There's some like you encounter a particularly old tree and you mm -hmm. take a moment to take a closer look at it and you can't see any indication of, of these stories. So um, uh, there's, no, there's no concrete evidence to support that yet. Mm -hmm. um, the stories exist, but uh, you haven't found clear evidence of, of them. All good. 
Um, and yeah, so that's the caveat. Um, anything else happen on this journey on these two and a half days? Any, any, any color that anybody wants to add to it? You're imagining it's fine if not. Okay. Um, so about in the middle of the third day, so sorry, two, third, third, let's see, one day to the waters, one, two, three. So it's actually the middle of the fourth day. Um, so you can just picture yourself each night you're camping out. Um, there's the sound of uh, tons of um, uh, uh, forest wildlife and um, um, chirping insects and the like. It's actually a, a quite a, a, a pleasant um, environment to be in. In the middle of the, the fourth day of your journey, you um, uh, there's a rise um, that you that you top. Um, And looking down, um, there's a there's a there's a uh, kind of bare rock uh, table on top of this rise. So there's a there's an opening in the trees, and you you, you um, sort of climb up that to get to get a prospect. Isan's the first one up there because he's in the lead like usual. Um, I, okay, so real quick, uh, what is Isan's constitution? Uh, Isan's constitution is a thirteen. And Lily, what's Lily's constitution? Uh, ten. And Abdil? 10 as well. And Oz? Also 10. OK. <laughs> yes. I think you're all, you've all, uh, you've all worked up a sweat. And you can't for the life of you figure out how Isan, like in his armor, um, you know, yeah, maybe there's like a little bit of sheen, uh, sheen on that bald head. But uh, he just doesn't seem to be showing the, uh, uh, or sorry, they don't seem to be um, showing the, the physical uh, uh, stress of this of this journey. I mean, it's an easy trip, but it's a, it's a it's so far it's been a three and a half day hike. So in the middle of that fourth day, you get to on top of that. Isan gets on top of that, and looking down, um, uh, you can see actually the ribbon, the the gap in the trees where the ribbon is kind of like winding its way through, and in the distance, the, there's like a, a low mist along the trees, and there's a little bit of um, salt in the air. Um, those of you who have been near the ocean uh, uh, instantly recognize that as a, as a familiar um, smell. And certainly um, Oz, having traveled from far Tan Rilar, would have spent some time on a ship. Um, so this is your first hint of the, uh, the cold sea there, which lies along the northern coast. And uh, Abdil, how do you get a good, being the kind of most diminutive of the crew, how do you get a good view to, 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 the, to get this lay of the land? Things aren't easily visible to you in this circumstance. So how do you- No, I mean, and they're not easily visible to, to me being an offer on either, sort of beady eyes and having to squint a lot. So do you have um, to have people describe things at a distance to you? I or? do. I'm, I'm more taking it in by, by hearing, as you said, the, the chirp of the insects, sort of hearing the- uh, the differences in smelling the the salt, especially in the air, yeah. And then, and, as far um, as and, and then maybe sidling up to Isan and uh, and saying, "You are quite tall. Perhaps you could help a poor old vole uh, understand what lies beyond this ridge." Certainly, and Isan will pick up a deal. Um, and without even like asking, <laughs> many scoops. Um, Minutes. trying to be very helpful like overly helpful yeah. um and um and, and kind of lift up and uh like how about how big is that deal uh, very tiny okay so like and almost set um yeah. a deal on um isan's shoulder and it's like see for yourself oh oh <laughs> ah. <laughs> finish the squeaking and oh, wow well, this is this is uh, he sort of pats his hand on the top of top of your very shiny dome. This is this is marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> does um does Abdil have little like uh, claws? Yes, tiny little. So little. Okay, so you're yeah. patting Isan on the head. Yeah. Um, and from that um, prospect, this is the moment where the sort of camera draws up behind the the the, cra the crew, right? We see the four of you standing there on the on the stone table, looking down, and you see the ribbon winding through. And the sun, like your eyes are not great, but the sun, the bright sun is reflecting off that water, right? So you can pick out this shiny ribbon um, moving through the trees and you see ahead 
and um, only, you know, only another um, hour or two ahead uh, through the woods, there's a point where um, the river pulls an oxbow where um, from your perspective, it goes down and then it curves to the west dramatically and sort of back around and then makes a big loop and almost comes back and touches itself before it continues um, on its way uh, to the north. So, uh, uh, so the river goes, it's downhill from where you are, it goes like this and then goes, wraps a long way around and almost comes back on itself and then continues on its way. Um, and that passage that was cited to you um, uh, mm -hmm. returns um, as you, as your, as your, your, uh, your eyes sort of uh, pick up that, that shiny image. And he's on, um, Adil, do, do, do rivers normally do that? Hmm. Well, I don't believe so, but I have to say, as a student of anatomy, I am not sure whether that is the elbow or the knee, but it must be one of the two. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> Let's go. Well, come on. And Laylee will just take off. Okay, so Laylee, like running through the trees? Yeah, right. why not? Are you wearing your boots? Yes, my okay. heelless boots. Your heelless boots, just... okay. Um, so you're like, you know, you, you're sort of uh, uh, springing down the hillside there and, and disappearing <laughs> into the trees. And then we cut to um, that point in the river where it's doing the oxbow and Laylee's already standing there at the shore. Um, and Isan, Oz, and Abdil um, uh, show up, uh, arrive behind you. And across the I'm not river, sure whether I'm still riding on the shoulder, shoulder by the way. That's okay. really not up to me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Isan? Have you been carrying in this whole way? Um, <laughs> Isan will at some point realize that maybe they should have asked Abdil before picking him up. <laughs> and uh, well. Do you want down or would you like me to continue to help you see all taking all these wondrous sights? It's a great time to be alive. You are you are such a lovely, you are so lovely to keep me here. I shall ride on further. It does an old vole's nose well to smell that beautiful salt air from your beer. <laughs> so he'll and he'll take, he'll take advantage through to awesome. the point. <laughs> So it's, it's like you got your own little Yoda all of a sudden. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, um, it, it, it is one hundred percent the Yoda character. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when you get down there, the river is about um, thirty feet across at this point. Um, uh, it does get deeper, uh, um, and um, what Lily is looking at is on the far side of that river. There's you know there's a rocky shore. There's um, some kind of low ground cover, and then very quickly the trees rise up and you're looking at trees that are 20 feet in diameter. It's just like a mass of old growth cedar, tightly grown, like, like um, uh, Abdil, Abdil couldn't see it from up above, but you guys all saw there was this point where like the cedar forest kind of rises like a mushroom in the middle of this oxbow, right? So it's higher than all the other trees around it. And from your perspective, it's like a wall of forest. Like it's this very dense, it's definitely the oldest show trees that you've seen in the area. And Abdil, from your perspective, um, uh, I mean, your first thought is like, well, these are the older trees. Perhaps there's some sign that of, mm. of what I've heard over there. But but from this distance across the river, you can't make out if there's any carvings. And, and we are on the east side of the river. You are on the, you're approaching it from the south. So you're on the south side of okay. the bow. Heading uh, the south side. By, by your, so you're on the west. I'm picturing you being on the west bank. Yep as you're headed south and then it does this. So then you kind of hit it right here. Does that make sense? I can draw a little here. Yeah, just so we're clear. And I'm only asking because I, I I'm trying, I'm doing, I'm doing my darndest with them. Oh yeah, great. So this is the oxbow. Yes. And the river kind of winds back the way you came and you guys are standing here. Ah. Okay, that little dot. And then in here is the, um, the massive old growth. Perfect. Got it. And so the old growth really is, like you say, it is notably sort of this, this semicircular growth right in the middle of the oxbow that stands apart from the rest of the... Yeah, the, the river mostly separates it. You know from your perspective, from what you saw up above, that the, 
um, that that kind of uh, loop does have a part that connects to the um, the east side, the, the land on the east side of the river, but it's yeah. mostly, it's almost isolated by the river. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all good, okay, cool. And it is at this point. They're so big, I want to climb them. <laughs> We're gonna go there, right? <laughs> Why are we just standing here? Ah, uh, absolutely. This, this we need dream. more. We need more for the tale of the journey to the old growth. Yes, and and uh, this reminds me of a story, uh, a song, really. Uh, the Eye of the Trees, it's called. And as I recall it, and and I he sort of hums in 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 Tanrilar, but but having learned his lesson, uh, cr quickly switches to to the local tongue, uh, and and translates roughly. Uh, while tapping idly on the drum, there's a uh, the trees when they when they stand on the on the, the land where the river curves, they can learn the language of beasts and the language of people. And I'm I'm establishing using a song, which is called the Eye of the Trees. Oh wow! It's called the what? The Eye of Trees. The Eye of the Trees. The Eye of the Trees. <laughs> And you are establishing. Uh, I'm establishing that the, the trees can be encouraged to talk uh, if they grow in an oxbow island like that or semi quasi island like that. Ooh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Encouraged to talk. And in this, um, is it just anybody who can talk to the trees? Uh, in the in this song, it is uh, anyone whose need is great or whose heart is pure. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go ahead and establish that. Okay. That is um, an intelligence roll. Now, if I'm reading this right, I only I only roll it when it becomes tested. Oh yes, that's correct. Yep. You okay. are reading it right. Okay. But I have um, established it, and I, I I spent up an art to develop a new story. Great. So when I when I test it, I can spend art further to bump the roll. Because that's part of your bard. Okay. That's a bard, yeah, bard skill called oh. Fount of Lore. See, I don't even know my bard because it's only been the only bard previous to you was actually Bob. Bob is the only bard. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all very much in testing. Drive to the wheels, come on. Excellent. Okay, and I think this is probably you know if anybody's uh, this is where you have like your your sort of midday um, snack or whatever before you um, decide what to do next. Uh, and I'll just I'll just say that uh, Abdil, after hearing that um, the bit the bit of song, is grilling you about that because he appears to be very tuned in on. Well, what, what, but no, but the mention the original language, please. Uh, I, but, I, but yeah, I we, sang it in Tanrel Arnett's. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that sounds like a keep company opportunity. Oh yeah, keep it, oh, absolutely yeah. keep company. Let's keep some company. Um, when that. you spend more than a little time getting to know someone, ask them a question or tell them a story. Um, it sounds like you were asking a question. Mm -hmm. And roll plus bonds you have with that person. So right now you have zero bonds with Oz. So roll 2d6 plus nothing. Hey, 10. Uh, the exchange goes well. Play it out or summarize it and choose two from the list below. Uh, in this case, uh, the choices end up being just because of the limitations. You each gain a bond with the other person. Cool. And how does that, if you guys, I mean, that, that what just happened could be a fair summary, or if you wanted to um, put a more positive spin on it, you could do that also. Uh, so what might be interesting, um, because you're a scholar, is perhaps the, you, you actually notice something in the Tanrilar language that, you know, I, despite being a native speaker, maybe never really picked up on, which is that there is actually a slight tonal difference when talking about, uh, or when singing about um, a story that is that is known to be true and observed to be true versus a story that's just been told for so long that everyone believes that it's true. Mm -hmm. And also point out this sort of the, the chord progression, it, it, it corresponds to sort of ancient uh, hymnals. And so that this isn't actually just a, a, a popular entertainment. This is something that probably came down through the priesthood or some other source that would then further add credence. I seem quite offended that you would suggest that any of my songs are not uh, holy, holy writ. <laughs> <laughs> As if. All right. Wow. What's the next move? Does this mean we can talk to the trees? <laughs> well, I mean, I think we should. 
Is that, I mean, uh, is that did Oz share that with the whole party? Sorry, Oz keeps Oz keeps oh. nothing uh, in confidence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is there any reason we shouldn't talk to the trees if they're here? By all means, we just need to cross the water. Oh, yes. Okay. How deep is the water? Is um, it it's gonna fast? be it's gonna be a swim. Um, unless you want to go, you want to backtrack and go up and find a shallower place where you can cross and come down. But by that point, it would probably be evening, which might be I mean, fine. Layla's just gonna dive in. Just dive in. <laughs> oh, no. She's gonna take a, a big jump. It's like right. she's gonna try to jump as far as <laughs> cross and just swim. Like she wants to get there. Okay, great. She's sitting around too long. Is she gonna take off her boots first to be to swim easier, or carry her boots separately, or is she fine swimming with her boots on? Oh, to be honest, her boots probably aren't that. Actually, no, that's her bra her boots do a bronze. So I think Lily, but she's kind of impatient. I think she just jumps in with the boots on. <laughs> okay, great. So she, uh, uh, Lily's swimming across. What are the rest of you guys doing? Isan was gonna was happy with the idea of not trying to swim in armor <laughs> and going, you know, on to evening. But now that Lily has jumped in, Isan is <laughs> is going to dive in. <laughs> right after <laughs> um with like all of his gear on does he have like a backpack and whatnot <laughs> yeah i mean it's not a vast distance so there's really it's not a problem just as long as just everybody should be aware if there's anything kind of water uh that water might harm that would be something to, to right um <laughs> isan is um i guess swept up in the, in the enthusiasm yep. <laughs> and is hopeful to discover some kind of um amazing legacy here that he that they don't even think about it right. it's just the perfect like you know run in awkward shuffling down into the water and then diving after. okay fantastic okay. love it and there's like a and what's his strength what's Isan's strength uh Isan's strength is 12. okay so uh and it's only a 20 foot 30 foot it's only a 30 foot stretch so it's just like uh, some furious paddling swimming and um of course Laylee's over there in an instant um and then um you kind of pull yourself dripping uh water pouring off of you onto the opposite shore there uh soaking wet Oz and Abdil Abdil's going to very methodically and fairly slowly strip down to just about only his his loinclothes and bundle everything up methodically in a little satchel like and create this um uh, you sort of the staff through the loincloth and a little bundle on the back yeah. and suspending that above the water sort of take his little paws and very carefully and slowly um, <laughs> skitter across the oh my god I love it okay you know. great uh, yeah um, Oz can probably swim but but not dressed the way he's dressed mm -hmm. so it, it takes a little longer to, to get everything all tied up and, 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 and wrapped together and I'm gonna to try to like wade as far as I can. Okay. And then inevitably when the river gets too deep, kind of like stumble in and just and splash across. And flail across. Yeah. But also sort of with your stuff tied up separate to keep it dry. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. So you guys are on the far so side. Not as, not as well or methodically as Abdil did it. <laughs> A messy bundle. Yeah. Um, great, so uh, you're all on the, on the far side and um, uh, the owl, uh, um, and uh, Abdil and Oz are, you know, uh, getting dressed again. And uh, Laylee and Isan have been looking at these trees and kind of checking them out up close. And um, there are, in fact, marks on these trees. They are, um, uh, Abdil can tell you that, that he recognizes, um, I don't know how well versed Abdil is in, in Ajat um, um, glyphs, but, uh, and here, there's not a ton of them, but you can like, um, even your little vole eyes can make out like, you know, 25 foot up the side of a tree. You'll see, you see like where the, the bark has grown around some ancient carving that was placed in. In fact, it's so distorted by the tree kind of, you know, it's like a, a, a scar in the tree. It's so distorted that you can't make out exactly what rune it is, but it was very clearly um, carved into the side of it. And the, you, you, um, there's one here. And then you, you know, you walk a little bit down the shore and you see another one. Yeah. And these trees have grown up next to each other. So they're like, you know, there's like very little space between them. It's essentially a wall 
of um, of forest here where you can't, you know, lately, especially being, you know, small and slight and agile, um, like maybe you could climb these things, but like you can't for the life of you figure out how to get between them, which seems oh, completely unnatural. Oh. <laughs> oh, trust me. Um, I, and so uh, Abdil is definitely a student of the Ajat uh, and um, if there, so he would certainly, if there are any runes that are recognizable, he would, he would certainly try to call up that knowledge. Um, but he will say to his companions, um, uh, whatever you do, do not injure the trees. These are holy trees and this is a place of holy worship. It will only end in calamity if we do. Um, um, so you think, sorry, go ahead, Beth. No, no, go ahead. Um, Didn't mean to Abdil, you think that alternating on these trees, it, it, that it's, two, it's two runes alternating. Um, there's, there's one and then another shape and then another. And your best guess from what you know is that one is the um, pictogram for um, evening or twilight. Mm. And the other is the pictogram for gate or door. Um, I will share that with my companions and uh, elaborate that um, the, the trees you see by by virtue of their holiness and connection with the gods could be made to do things. And as our friend has said, they talk to us and we talk to them. Perhaps the way may be made clear when the time is right. Oh, well, that's too long from now. I wanna see what's in there now. Um, you said I can't hurt them, but can I climb them? Yes. Okay, um, I'm gonna go up to a tree and first I'm gonna just kind of tap it and I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna climb you, Mr. Tree, okay? <laughs> uh, you understand me? Um, and it's not gonna hurt, but I'm just asking permission, all right? Okay, and then I'm gonna try to scurry up the tree. Okay, um, is your, is your um, area of expertise acrobatics? Is that what it is? Yes, it is. Okay, <laughs> Um, yeah, so no roll required. You, um, there's, these are, you know, they're, they're actually, the, the low branches are quite high up, but the surface of the tree itself has got enough handholds and stuff. So, you know, the rest of the crew sort of stands back and watches Laylee, um, you know, finds a handhold there, finds it, and, and like, as soon as you get a sense of how the bark works, you're like, you're up. And you get into that lowest branch, you know, the lowest branch is a good, it's a good four or five feet in diameter. And then you're in this um, very dense uh, collection of twisted branches. Um, there's, um, and there's big cedar cones as well and a lot of that on the ground. Uh, and um, then you're, you're looking down from about, I think you're about 25 feet up, 30 feet up. Uh, and um, you have to sort of make, yourself, make your way through this mass of branches to, um, to get to the other side. And when you're up here, things feel quieter. Like the way it might feel if you walked into um, a closed room or like a, a temple chamber, right? Like something down there, it's like the, there's the running of the water and the chatter of the people. And up here, when you look back at them, just from 30 feet away, you can see that they're talking to each other, but their voices feel a little muffled. And the, you, you know, your hearing has changed a little bit. Um. Can I sort of jump from from treetop to treetop to try to see if I can, you know, see what's on the other side? Yeah. So you want to like move through the branches to try to like you're trying to penetrate this wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um. So you. Do oh, that we you... want everyone first. Let them know I'm I'm okay. Isan <laughs> will shout up and just and say, "What do you see up there?" Oz is recording this. <laughs> and then turns and looks to Oz. You're taking poetic license, correct? Uh, I know of no other license, my friend. <laughs> You're adding beautiful. a couple of beasts I can wrestle. <laughs> um, I don't see any beasts yet. Oh, but it's beautiful up here. And, and it's quiet. And 
Oh, you should come up here. Oh, do you want to? I can drop a rope. <laughs> uh... Beats standing down here. Uh, yes. Um. Okay, yes. just a moment. Uh, I have a robe. That's where the rest of my money went. Nice. Uh, you can't be a thief without a robe. So I will pull it out. It's still wet because, like everything else on me, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna look for a solid tree branch and no tie it around there. So, you know, get a good strong knot, give it a couple tugs, and look over, and then okay. Drop rope it down. uncoils all the way down, and now anybody who wants to can um, climb that rope. I don't know how capable each of you are. I don't know how Ibanaquins can Ibanaquins climb ropes. I mean, uh, Al I Alfrens are terrible at it. Okay. We don't like um, the ground, so I'm not sure. Abdul is not running at the the chance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Isan will will turn to Abdul and uh, would you like me to help you again? Oh, oh my, oh please, Ab yes. Uh, but I must, I must. And he's going to take one of his um, one of his sort of bindings or piece of cloth, and as he as you sort of very kindly lift him up, he's going to sort of wrap part of his arm around maybe your shoulder or some point to really secure himself on there. Uh, you can tell he's he's very nervous about this. And it is now once again like the Yoda carry almost, <laughs> okay. uh, and we have Isan climbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just like I'm pretty sure that is a scene. <laughs> um, <laughs> with with every with every sort of hand over hand, there's a there's a muffled squeak from behind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and is Oz going to go up or Oz going to stay down? Uh, I think Oz thinks about it and uh but decides that this is where this is where the adventure lies and i didn't come all this way to, okay. to hide okay great so you're yeah. you're up too and you get up there and Laylee uh, is Laylee already off in the branches is Laylee already urging ahead oh. or is Laylee waiting i mean she, i don't think she she's like a good like you know tree or so away at this point like okay. Okay. like you're kind of her arm and she's like come on as I like reach through the thicket. Great, so you go through and it's like, once you get in there, it is like this dense um, interweaving of, um, um, it's just like, it just gets super crazy dense and there's like, you know, ancient moss and um, um, this is what it looks like up in the trees, right? Like just like this, this crazy dense and it's, um, it's like, there's even a little bit of mist. There's almost like a different, you feel like there's a different kind of, um, climate almost in this area right the temperature changes and Layla, you're in the lead so you're like people are like actually losing sight of you as you kind of disappear into these branches and then you emerge through this after climbing through this tangle um and you find yourself um did everybody bring their stuff with them or did we leave anything behind oh i left the rope hanging because we'll have to climb okay, back down great it. so you come back you come through you're, you're like okay, this is it. I can see the light up ahead. And you, you come through to what must be the inside of this thing. And then you look down and you see the river and you'd be like, oh gosh, did I cross the whole oxbow? I'm on the other side. And then you look to the right and you see a rope hanging, you know, like 20 yards away on the right. So somehow you must've gotten turned around in those branches. Um, and then in another moment, um, uh, Isan emerges about 10 yards to your left with uh, Abdil on his back. Uh, and, um, uh, Oz uh, shows up right back at the rope. Oh. So you were all sure that you were pushing through um, and uh, you appear to have re-emerged in the, the same area where you started. I, friends, I, I believe we said before the trees may speak. I think the trees are telling us something. And perhaps the honored sun has not opened for us yet. Trees want us to slow down. I've been thinking. Um, so, Jason, would the the uh, is it possible that the so the father, if we were saying that was Talat Adheb, would is the son traditionally associated with Talat Adheb? Yes. 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 Okay. So maybe Abdul will will suggest that um, the the poem that Jazra gave us when the father bids farewell when Talat Adheb sets on the horizon the honored sun opens we see the doors below the cedar will perhaps make way for us and at this point with the connection to the woods and the trees would i maybe have an inkling of what the honored sun would allude to mm. let's see we've established you've read about the cedars and their religious significance yeah um 
But well, you made that role already, right? Didn't you already make yeah. that role? Yeah, you I made that role, and so I I knew about it, but you said it needed some some additional you, information. You had to consult with, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can't. You feel like there is an honored son that may be associated with the forest or trees, but you can't. Yeah, um, can't make remember. the full connection. Yeah. To uh. wait, do you think we could just, you know, ask the trees if they'll open up? I have some fears, my friends, some well-founded fears, I think, from what I'm hearing, that the, the message we were given was that the doors would be open to those with harmonious intention. And the song said that the trees would share their wisdom with the very pure or the very needful. And, and I must admit, I am neither harmonious nor pure though needful. I mean, we all need to, to, to do this task that we were, you know, um, hired for. So that counts. And assuredly, we are a harmonious group composed of the, of the highest and the lowest, the the strongest and the weakest among Oh my God. Nice. <laughs> you really are covering the bases. I think, so this is, I think everybody's kind of migrated closer, right? So you're still up in the branches, but you've kind of gathered around Lely as an ideal from, from uh, uh, his on perch high. on Isan's shoulders there um, uh, makes that comment. Uh, I'm going to, Bob, I'm going to have you roll to keep company with everybody. Oh gosh. Um, uh, so that is, and uh, so <laughs> you're rolling 2d6 and you already have a bond with? Uh, Laylee and Oz. Laylee and Oz, great. So for them, for the purposes of that, they're gonna get plus one. So just roll 2d6 and see what we get. So I get a nine, natural, okay. so a, na a natural nine without any additions. Great. So um, you get bonds with each of those people you already had bonds with. Oh, that's nice. And you can either gain a bond with, sorry, you don't have one with Oz yet? I do have oh. one with Oz, but not with Isan. Okay, sorry. Oh my gosh, I can't believe by this point you don't have a bond with Isan after all the-, all I, That's the, true, actually. So that's this is, kind this of, is but yeah, so you can um, gain one with him or, or with them, or they can gain one with you. So you would write down Isan's name, or Isan would write down your name. Uh. I'll write down Isan's name, maybe because the, the the connection I feel. It's a very, it's a very, it's a uh, he's very grateful. Whereas this is a small thing for Isan, it's a very big thing for Abdul. Got it. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah. So go ahead, and put that down. Um, because that was a great way to a way to kind of bring everybody together as a as a group there. Um. All right. Yeah. So uh, what's next? You're gonna uh, make another attempt? Or are you going to wait? I want to try to ask the trees because we still haven't talked to them. Ooh. So I want to, you know, we're up here. I'm going to sit down on a branch and, um, you know, put myself right, like looking at the trunk of the tree. And um, I'm going to introduce myself um, and say how we've traveled uh, so many days to come here and see you. And um, my friend Oz tells me that you might not be willing to let us in because we're not pure of heart or we're not harmonious or we don't have needs, but I'm here to assure you that all of those things are true. These people, they're so nice. Um, Abdul over there, he, he gave up his money so that we could get paid more for this trip. And, um, and Oz sang us songs at night in a language we didn't understand, but they were really pretty and it made this adventure more exciting. And Isan has been carrying Abdul when he can't see things um, and like shouldering that burden for him. So you see these people are all really good and we just need to get in. Um, I guess that's the neat part of it. So will you just, you know, open up please? 
That sounds like you're trying to negotiate with a cedar tree. Is that fair yeah. to say? Okay. I and don't. This have... is this is clearly testing my theory about my story about the trees as well. Yeah. Uh, and and Jason, I I would like to invoke one of my bonds. Okay. So bond with Lele and say that as she's speaking to the tree, uh, what words in Ajat I know for what she's trying to say, I'll try and feed her. Oh, okay. So like occasionally those, there's a break and you you tell Lele the Ajat word and Lele will say the Ajat word? Yeah, oh. and, and, so, and so much as she, you're right, to provide some at least mean translation. Okay, so you're helping in, in that. In case the way. language matters. Yeah, to provide a, yeah. And Adam, you are the the story is coming into play here and this is we're, it's being tested now right whether right. the trees like, can talk should should i roll first or should should beth roll hers first i think you need to roll yours first to see if okay. it's actually true <laughs> if it's actually true or if i'm just embarrassing myself come on that looks I'm, pretty good I that's mean, uh that's a 10. all right uh it's just as you say and that means that uh, light Lele, you get to negotiate with this tree. You're taking plus one for the help of Abdil. And if Abdil wants to mark a bond, he can give you an extra, an additional plus one. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'll and uh, Lele, it seems like, so with negotiate, it's either strength to intimidate, intelligence to appeal to their sense of reason, or charisma to charm or deceive them. Which of those? Uh, I think this is Lele trying to be charming. Okay, great. So you're going to roll charisma. You get, uh, do you have a charisma modifier? I do, I have plus one. What? You got a, wow. I got a 13 charisma. I thought, I thought there was, I, I thought. really useless skills for a rogue, but you know, <laughs> it, this is a really bad character. Fantastic. So you get plus one for that. You get plus one for the basic help and then plus one for the bond. So that's a total three. plus and one. I have a plus one. I don't know if this holds over since we've traveled so many days, but from our first day, I had a plus one forward. Is that still sticking around? I think because you didn't get a chance to use it, it totally sticks around. So, and you've hit right, plus I've four, which plus is. This is the max modifier you can ever get. So um, right. you never get higher than plus four and you've got it for this move. Let's not fuck this up. Oh, and I totally did not fuck that up because I rolled a nat 11. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, um, Whoa. Too much okay, help. So 15, knock it out of the park. So everybody's Please. gathered around. Trees start to glow. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's... Um, there's this thing that happens where I'm going to say who, okay, uh, between Oz and Isan, who has the higher wisdom? Uh, I've got a 14. A nine. Okay, so Oz, I don't know if you're taking in the events uh, as this uh, uh, legend you've heard is being realized in front of you by this small uh, mason girl. Oh yeah, um, absolutely wrapped. Absolutely wrapped. Okay, great. Well, you are the only one that perceives the actual the shadows of the branches around you as they strike the trunk and other branches um, um, start to move. And so your first thought is, you know, maybe at night when a torch passes by, there's that kind of movement. So you actually turn and look up and through the branches, you see the sun and it's actually visibly moving through the sky. Whoa, okay. How do you um, feel about that? Uh terrified but i think i i'm i'm feeling faded i think it's i'm in the right place at the right time i think as i recall uh yeah oz is egotistical so clearly <laughs> of course my story was true uh and uh beth i forgot the name of your character i'm sorry Lely. Lely. uh Lely, Lely, it's working look and uh, i point to where i'm seeing the the sun move and by the time everybody turns to look the sun is actually at the horizon and as it re so it's moving at this this pace, which is you know, I don't know if that feels apocalyptic or if people are just so transported by the strangeness that like it feels normal. It's totally up to you how you feel about that. Um, but the sun actually is visibly moving through the sky, and then when it reaches the horizon, it slows. And as it starts to dip below the horizon, the kind of orange red, you know, this is across the treetops of the ribbonwood, which you can see from your perspective, shifts from orange to red to kind of a purple to kind of a gray and all the shadows around you uh, fade into this kind of twilight. And um, there's a moment where um, all the branches kind of like open up and spread out. So all of a sudden it's spacious inside there. You're up in the branches of these trees and it just kind of like opens up and everything is bathed 
in this um, between light where there's no shadows and there's no bright light. And, um, and then uh, when you turn and look, both moons, both of the remaining moons are in the sky and the whole um, area in front of you is just cast in this um, silver light. And clearly you all have this feeling of like, not necessarily welcome, but like the door has been opened. Uh, what are the names of the moons? I can't fucking remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can look it up for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, will. I will right now. No, are they? Are they? Oh, they're totally no. It, it's totally in the document, isn't it? It's the two. It's the two remaining daughters, and they are. Um, yeah, what is? Uh, it is Aedala, who is the goddess of justice. Um, and Al Sabra, who is the goddess of patience. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Abdul will, um, there's a traditional greeting to, uh, to welcome the, the sisters into the sky and to, wow. give, uh, and to give condolences for the loss of their, their sister. Right, so he utters the, that that, mm -hmm. that greeting. Fantastic. So here, the the, the branches have opened for you. Um, lately, the trees appear to have heard you. I say thank you, trees. <laughs> um, well, let's go. What are you guys waiting for? Clearly, <laughs> trees want us to go in. And then I stand up and I'll start pushing my way through again. Isan will follow right behind. Do you like right behind Lely? Yeah. I'll push Isan's hand, yeah. actually. Oh, oh, uh, and oh great. Like, come on. Yeah. And, and yeah. by necessity, Abdul goes along squeaking. <laughs> uh, Oz doesn't wait long, but long enough to, to open up a ration pack and like um, find something uh, that he whatever his favorite food is like a bit of uh uh jerky maybe and and like sh shreds the end of it and uh and says thank you to the trees and just sort of drops it as an offering and then runs off great i love it that's a wonderful image um according to the calendar so Aedala is half in, the, in the sort of a half moon and um the other moon is a thin crescent. So those are the, that's, that's what's up there in the sky. And uh, Lely is the first to emerge. Um, um, so in this case, where before you heard the water of the river and saw sunlight as you emerged here, the, the branches kind of grow less dense. And it's um, uh, just this, this, even though the moons are not full, there's just like this bright um, silver light um, filling up the space on the other side of, of the trees and you're up there when you come to the edge you look down and you have a sense of you're at the edge of a long perimeter of a perimeter of that of the growth that you're in and you see all of those branches um, um rising up into the night sky twilight sky and down below you you see uh, a ruined um structure a ruined stone structure giant slabs of rock toppled overgrown with moss. Um, uh, uh, there's trees, there's giant trees growing on top of what was clearly once a, um, a stone building. And so there, the sort of, sort of the, um, the body of the building, whatever, whatever chambers it may be comprised of is largely covered by um, forest growth um, ahead of you. And uh, in what looks to be like the main approach to this um, uh, structure, there is, from this height, you can all recognize there's some kind of like um, kind of open area, um, um, call it a courtyard or other kind of approach. And there is the, a fragment of a, um, of a statue in the center of it. And then behind that, um, there's an opening in the structure that um, uh, leads into darkness. I've got like Isan's hand because like I'm pulling him along behind me and as we get to this edge like I squeeze his hand and I say see I told you we were gonna have an adventure. Isan just looks we're gonna be legends. Yeah. <laughs> um Dil, what is this place? This this um uh the do, can I make out the detail we're too far from the statue right or yeah, you're gonna have to get down there. Yeah, and the shape, the general shape of the structure, 
Uh, um, from here, it's like there's this main courtyard, and then um, like it looks like to the right, left, and behind there are um, structures that are all overgrown. So um, um, if you just picture like a thing, and then maybe three areas beyond that, and then there's so much tree growth past that, you're not really sure. And as a student of the Ajat uh, and sort of knowing the the legends of the cedar groves, would uh, would I think or know that this might be a temple or a place of some? You definitely have the sense. Uh, 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 Abdil, I'm going to say Abdil knows that this is a holy place. Yeah, and I'll I'll, I'll say as much to my companions that this this is a this this is a place of worship to the old gods. What would the people who could build such things worship? <laughs> mm. Yes, indeed. The powers they possessed were mighty indeed. The gods we think of today pale in comparison to the Ajat and their terrible deities. <laughs> but... Well well, now I'm scared. I wasn't scared. <laughs> <laughs> but with... But with every terrible and angry one came one of such love and light that your yourself would be obliterated in the sight of them. Ah, such days, such days long gone now. Hmm. Dangerous so we... to go inside? Sorry, Beth, say it again. Do you think it's dangerous to go inside? Because I really want to go in. Mm. As do I, as do I. Oh, okay, then let's go. <laughs> I started climbing down the tree. Um, I would like, before we, before we make any, uh, okay, so hold on. I'm just, I'm having a role-playing conundrum. Oz is hasty, um, but he also is, <laughs> he's, he's very selfish and doesn't want to die. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do then is this: uh, before before I before I rush down, um, I do want to look around. I want to get a, I want to look for for danger. Now I'm looking out apparently for avatars of old gods uh, beyond yeah. mortal reason. Uh, but okay. I, I want to I, I just I want to look for obvious signs of, of trouble. Yeah. That or, or I guess slightly less obvious signs of trouble. But I, regardless of what the answer is, I'm already halfway down the tree as well. Okay. Yeah, so there's a quick. I... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, if it's, if Isan notices that Oz is kind of hesitant or holding back, they'll turn and, and say, um, Oz, do you recall the story of the bard that stayed behind and waited among the trees? <laughs> I certainly don't. And... <laughs> uh, so I, I'm going to ask you a question, uh, Jason, which is, um, is there anything that is obviously dangerous to us here is that a part of a move or is that it's, it's find answers using wisdom oh okay great um smart sorry is there anything of obvious danger yes that was the question yes um, and i will you, I will, you don't I have will to roll, roll that you don't okay. have to roll for that because it's, it's about obvious danger um uh, oh right sorry i, I to, to even invoke the move it has to be something more than is readily apparent so uh, okay, is there is there an obvious is there a danger that is obvious to me with my big ears and my good night vision that That's maybe great. wouldn't it wouldn't pop out to anyone else? Yeah, great, love it. Um, it's not only that, but your nose, right? Yeah. Um, so you pick up, and this is again, you don't have to roll for this. This is okay. if, if 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 what's 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 allowing you to know this is you took a moment to pause and look, right? And if it was something that you might not notice or hidden, then I might ask you to roll if there's like some secret. Um, but what is obvious to you with your senses, with your Ibn senses, is that, um, yes, your ears kind of, and um, you're, you're sort of scanning the whole area, and just even as you're like moving to um, climb down and Izan is <laughs> throwing a veiled insult <laughs> in your direction. Um, your nose, you pick up underneath this feeling of like, um, you know, earthy, mossy, foresty, the cedar, the strong smell of the cedar, underneath that you pick up um, the smell of rot of um, that kind of uh, veg rotten vegetation you, you, when you break open like a, um, a disintegrating log in the forest, that kind of black matter inside, um, you pick up that underneath, underneath everything. 
um, more so. And you've picked up something like that, of course, during this whole journey, because forests decay all the time. But there is like a um, there's a kind of uh, uh, a, a kind of edge to this smell that is um, I wouldn't say alarming, but it definitely gives you a little bit of a um, of a pause as you um, arrive on the ground. And um, along those lines, since you're kind of tuned into that, as you guys approach this statue, um, uh, Oz, you notice um, off to one side, to the left of this jumbled, this sort of overgrown um, temple, um, uh, what an, uh, an ancient cedar has fallen over. And it's the only one in this whole, right? Everything has this, there's definitely this prevailing sense of this isn't a regular forest. There's not the usual kind of deadfall. Um, there's one of these uh, cedars has fallen over and it's not, wasn't obviously visible because it's lying sort of next to the perimeter of trees and its roots are, you know, yoinked out of the ground as happens when, when a tree topples and the roots are completely shriveled and blackened and coiled up like a fist. And then mm. extending up the trunk and it's unnaturally kind of black and falling apart. And, it's, and so it's a dead forest log, except there's something about that root structure, which is um, unnatural. Okay. Saying nothing, I just point to that. I point, point it out to, uh, I tap Isan on the shoulder and point with my hands shaking. Yeah, hey, what do you see? Uh, it, it is said that that when forests get old, they fall and they grow and they rot and new trees grow in the bodies of the old, but nothing is growing out of that blackened thing. It is not right. The cycle's been broken with it. The wheel yes. is not as it should. Yes, well said. I mean, this is a weird place to begin with, though. Like, the trees talked and this, these... This forest is protecting this temple and we saw the sun move in the sky and maybe this is just normal here, right? Perhaps this is all we had to describe to our employer, right? The, the crumbled statue, the fallen tree. Yes, let's, let's go, this is it, this is what we need. We... You, you're, you're probably, you might not be wrong. We, we could probably come back and describe, but there are always those tales of Great things to be found. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. We must, <laughs> we must see who this place is sanctified to, whatever this rot is. So we cut to Abdil saying that, and the, the, the angle is behind the statue. And we see from that angle that the head and right arm of the statue have been shorn off. <laughs> and what remains is what looks like a figure in robes, perhaps 12 feet tall in its original form, but its head is missing. Um, you see that its, it's um, left arm is out and um, the robe falls back to the elbow and its palm is held um, up. Uh, and Abdil, the thing that is a particular note, so like so far, basic religious iconography, yes. um, but the thing that you take particular note of is that underneath the hem of the robe, um, uh, uh, roots are have uh, carved roots. The statue itself has roots carved into it, uh, emerging from underneath the hem of the rope, as if the figure, um, instead of feet, had roots. Present as male or female uh, by, the, by the dress? Me, oh, by the dress. This would be an ajat. Uh, I'm going to say that there was no distinction between uh, yeah. genders in terms of this kind of ceremonial robe that it might mm -hmm. be wearing. So you can't tell. I mean, I guess from the, the hand, it's it's fairly nicely carved. And actually, you can tell when you get up there and sort of touch it and examine it closer that it's actually petrified wood. Mm. So it looks, it has the aspect of stone, but you actually can tell that it's wood when you get up there close. Um, from the size of the hand relative to the arm, you would guess that it's male. Understood. That it's supposed to be a man. A man. <clears throat> um, and we are at um, the 1130 EST mark. So that in fact does mean, just as Oz said, <laughs> that there's, you can maybe do a little more examination here um, and then there'll be a return. We're not gonna roll for set out. We're just gonna like use up rations to get back to town. And then you can interact with um, your contact. And um, in, in the future, you can choose to mount admission to return to this spot. Oh. Fantastic. Damn it, I wanna see what's inside that fucking <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> all right. All right, so is there any other information people want to gather from this position? Before, I mean, if you want, you can take a peek. It's not just, so there were these three, looks like um, chambers, one directly behind the statue, one to the right and one to the left, and they all seem connected back there somewhere. The one to the left is the structure is completely collapsed. It's just a jumble of giant stones overgrown. The, there's an archway directly behind the statue that's beckoning. And then also to the, um, to the right is another archway. Um, both of them, um, or just there's darkness beyond. So if anybody wanted to take a peek, you'd be welcome to before you uh, you have to return. I mean, I think <laughs> Lely and Abdul are both are both invested at least in. in, in yeah, and Isan will for... want to at least peek before leaving. Okay. Um, and so Isan's gonna draw one of three arrows in the quiver and knock it to the bow to the long bow just to kind of have it ready for in case, but, and kind of, in case something comes up, but we'll want to go forward. Great, I love it, yep, so you got that out. Is this like a special longbow, like made by your, you know, like? Um, so it, um, I, I, I mean, just visually, I like that really curvy kind of, mm -hmm, like those mm -hmm, two mm -hmm. big, yeah, yeah, great. you know, kind yeah. of uh, thing. Um, and this um, this particular longbow is um, a kind of like a family heirloom, and um, on investigation, uh, it, it would um, kind of reveal that it's it's a well known family mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that um, you know is a wealthy family. Oh. Um, you know, Isan, um, and it, it probably all tracks with the dress. And you know the kind of routine in that um, Isan grew up in wealth. Oh, okay. um, it was was part of a wealthy merchant family, um, and uh, you know that is nigh on nobility there. And um, it, it's very important to them that they've headed into the Western Wilds to make a name for themselves. But the bow, as a hunter, was uh, the one one mark of their family that they took with them. Oh, got it. Awesome. Love it. Before denouncing, because they, they, the name is Isan al Isan because Isan has denounced the family name in order to make a name for themselves. Oh, great. And Dude. not live off the legacy of their family. Yeah, they are and their own. That bow is the one thing that they hold on to of the family name. So, awesome. their legacy. I like your bow. Yeah. <laughs> Summarized as. <laughs> um, and Isan adjusts the, the grip so that it's not so identifiable <laughs> as a nice and family bow to kind right. of cover that up. Little and you, you notice that the left ring finger on Isan's finger is missing um, down to the uh, like knuckle, probably about. Ooh, there. okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Is that a known marker of someone who's forsaken their family? Could be. It's only up to you whether it is or not. Um, I um I think like originally in the background I had Isan. Uh, it was lost it in a hunting accident, and Isan had no. Um, and it was the specifically the ring finger. Isan had no, um, which might be a Western too much of a Western thing, but Isan had no desire to marry anyway. Um, and I had chased as one of my oh, okay. uh, okay. traits. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. it was like a sign to them that they were never gonna get married <laughs> anyway. Okay. And always seeing it there, but um, that I kind of like that, that added thing of having denounced a family name is the missing finger is a, is a sign of that. And maybe it's both, um, right? Like if you forsaken right. your family, then you're not a good marriage. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like those things can be can be tied together. Great. Wow. Awesome. A little peek into the backstory there. And who does anybody have a light source? Or are you just gonna peer using your um I couldn't afford torches? <laughs> I believe I have maybe a torch if I can find it, because I figured Yes, I'm strong I enough torch. to carry torches. So. <laughs> I mean, Oz... yeah, I'm, I'm running right up onto my like I have uh, ten, ten that I can carry. Was a ten weight that I can carry, ten. and I'm right on the ten. Yeah. Um, so, but I do have a torch. So Isan will um, we'll hand Lely a torch and a tender box, and 
ask her to please light it up because he saw is trying to hold on to the bow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll light the torch. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, I mean, I'm, uh, you can't be stealthy really when you're holding a big light source, but I'm going <laughs> to be try to be quiet. Yeah. Okay. As I like go up to this, like, and peer around this corner yeah. into this dark space. So everybody's like I... behind you as Layla. Yeah. Quietly. And I'm like on my tiptoes actually doing the rogue thing. Okay. Could, and so when you like, you could, when you strike um, up that torch, yeah, go. Got oh, you could also hand it to see if Abdul will take it. Um, and you know, if Abdul is still strapped to um, Isan's back, um, and, uh, yeah, torchbearer right on the back. Um, I think that's a hilarious image. I, okay. I'll give it to him. Great. So Abdul holds the torch aloft, and when you when that torch flares up, so this whole area that you're in is all like cool twilight. You know, it's like this gray. There's no real. Oh, it's almost desaturated. Um, um, when you light up that torch, there's like this boom, like this um, orange and yellow light kind of bathes the whole area. And all of a sudden you can see um, the colors of the green moss and like there's yellow lichen growing in places and the statue, you know, um, that petrified wood has almost like an orange cast to it. Um, and that, so the torch kind of like changes the whole environment um, uh, as it flares up. And then you hand it up to um, Abdiel and he holds it and Isan, um, all, all of you cautiously approach um, the archway directly behind um, the statue, and when, uh, 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 yeah, I think the archway is tall enough where, <laughs> where even sitting on uh, uh, Isan's shoulders, you can sort of hold the torch down, and that light, the torchlight, is cast inside. And what you see is it's a long chamber. There are a couple of um, uh, holes in the ceiling where some moonlight is spilling in, but the torchlight is kind of like taking over the room. Um, just a few feet inside the door, the 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 floor, the, the giant pieces of masonry that comprise the floor have fallen away, and um, the the it seems it appears as if the entire floor of this chamber has collapsed into some void beneath and is filled up with water. So the the torchlight is reflecting off of like a long rectangular, almost like a reflecting pool, right? If you can picture that, and then in the far. Um, uh, the torchlight picks up on the uh, left and at the far end of this chamber, um, two more archways opening into who knows what. Um, the right hand wall has mostly collapsed and a lot of the stone there has fallen into the pool as well. So there's like this jumble of tumbled rock into the water. And with the torch, you can't really make out anything in the water, right? Because the light just reflects and you can't, you can't pierce that water with the torch lit. Um, so you don't, no idea what the water's concealing. Um, it does pick up. There's like some filmy stuff kind of floating on the surface that you can make out from that. Oh. Um, so that is the, and there's like a whoop, whoop, whoop of dripping yeah. water. Um, oh, and this, I should say this whole time you guys have not heard any wildlife. There hasn't been any insects or frogs or anything like that. So it's been um, unearthly quiet in here. Mm. Uh, and then when you move to the other opening, um, Again, the, the, the floor gives way, falls away into a space, but here it's not filled with water. Um, and just from the light of the torch, you, the whole floor kind of gives away. And most of the ceiling of this chamber is also missing. And growing up out of the, let's call it, it's, it's almost like a giant sinkhole, right? Where most of the stone has fallen into it. And growing up out of the sinkhole is a massive, a cedar tree, a massive ancient cedar tree that kind of reaches up from the depths and um, out through the roof. And uh, and now, you know, you recall that when you were back outside looking, you could see the branches of it extending out from this part of the structure. And um, your torchlight kind of barely reaches the trunk of that tree. So just from, you can see the kind of near face of it. And it's um, uh, tilted to the side. Um, Oz picks up that same smell of of like decay and rot veg vegetation. Um, uh, and the torchlight uh, picks up that the entire trunk of the tree is covered, is scarified um, from these ancient um, markings, the same, same kind you saw outside um, on the edge of the river. So the entire surface of the trunk of this tree, which has got to be 30 feet in diameter, it's like the, the biggest one you've seen so far, 
is covered in ancient Aja glyphs, none of which you can decipher at this juncture. It's just from the torchlight that you can make. Uh, I'll, I'll make a sketch in my book of as many as I can um, for future research. That's probably, that'll probably happen on your way, on your way back. Like you're recalling from memory or yep. people are describing them to you, right? Cause your eyesight's not that great. Exactly. Like you're trying to like write those things all down. Okay. So then I'm we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna cut back to town. Yeah, and Isan, as, as it sinks in that there's no wildlife around, Isan will at that point probably urge everybody to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, great. Um, Try Lily out of that place, yeah. to be clear. <laughs> so there's that, that whole conversation happens. We have to go, no, we must stay. Oz is urging everybody. Um, from, from here, when you turn back and look at, towards the, the tree perimeter, there's space between the trees. So eventually you all agree and you, you make your way um, carefully through those trees. Um, and um, when the last person uh, steps out between the trees, um, the light changes and um, it's morning and the sun has risen um, and everybody's um, exhausted because you didn't get uh, any sleep and who knows how much time has passed. Uh, any final, uh, anything else happened here on site on the, at this location? During the retreat, Oz pockets a piece of the petrified wood. Okay, great. Like finds a fragment on the ground and pockets yeah. it. Okay, great. I'm not leaving without my expensive rope to- Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta climb back up there and, and take that down. Yeah, so in the morning light, the entire place is closed up again. And it's just, um, once again, that big um, wall of ancient trees. So everybody, one, two, three, everybody mark off three more rations each. And we're um, not gonna roll for the return journey, just to expedite. The process. And uh, when you return to, oh, um, let's have um, Adam, will you roll 2d6 for weather for the return journey? You bet. Uh, seven. Okay. It's been beautiful weather this whole time. Um, clouds here and there. And um, yeah, so by the time you get back, you probably get back um, on an evening. And this is gonna be, this is a total of four, five, it's eight days after you, nine days after you left. There's a day unaccounted for in there, <laughs> given, given your, uh, and you, you know, you learn that from, I think it's probably the first person you talk to in town when you get back. You're like, what day is it? And then they, um, uh, they inform you. Um, uh, contact is made uh, in uh, Dry Basin, and then it's like probably the next, um, the next morning when you meet um, Jazri, Jazri, Jazra, Jazra That's in um, Truth Market, and in Truth Market you meet at Yershan's Rest, which is the big caravansary um, for the area. It's a very busy, bustling place, and. Um, uh, uh, but but it's actually not technically in Truth Market. It's literally like at the edge. And for some reason, there's this plaza with this tiered kind of wedding cake fountain in the middle of it. Um, this is a huge fountain that's like a major source of water for this part of town. Only the priests can access the highest. Yeah, and off one side of the plaza is the Temple to Um Only the priests can access the top of the water when it first comes out of the top. And then there's, you know, at the very bottom, people are doing their laundry and whatnot. The Truth Market is like super, you know, there's like people trading all kinds of stuff, super busy, bustling place. Um, so you, you're brought to, to Jasra there. In fact, you guys are waiting outside your Sean's rest and the attendant goes inside um, and then she comes out and- um, That's what we're waiting what? outside. I suggest to the group that we don't actually tell her about the temple. I mean, we can tell her about the trees with the signs and how we tried to go in and got lost. But given that we don't know what's inside the temple. <laughs> Maybe we should keep that for ourselves. It's not exactly a lie. We would tell the truth about everything else. We'll just admit something. I think that's a very clever solution. If she demands more, we can give her what she needs, but only in pieces as we go. Yes. And that way, 
we can be the first to go back and see what's inside, you know? Yes. Is that good with everyone? You all agree? Yes. Um, Oz is, uh, I'm visibly biting my tongue. Like, uh, like my tongue is hanging out of my mouth and I have big teeth dug into it, trying not to, to naysay. <laughs> Great, so she, she comes out and um, uh, uh, the attendant kind of gestures for you to cross. There's this line of, um, at each corner of the truth market is like an ancient Ajat stone, like a cornerstone, right? And apparently the enchantment runs between these four stones. So the, the, uh, 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 the attendant gestures for you, to, for you to cross the line. And in fact, there's a kind of like, um, uh, there's, uh, there's, not, there's not a table or anything. You have, you're just gonna stand in a little group um, with the, the, the busyness of the market all around you. And the attendant you notice is just kind of keeping an eye, clearly keeping an eye to make sure nobody's listening in on this conversation. And Jasra says, um, I am happy to see you return. Um, the gods have smiled upon me. I am eager to hear of what you have found. Oh, um. And, and wow. she, yeah, she's looking at you because you're, you're the uh, sensible leader of this group. Yeah, oh. Nissan will, just, will probably nudge Laylee to, <laughs> yeah, to yeah, like yeah, yeah. forward because Nissan's probably going to spill the beans if Nissan talks too much. <laughs> oh. Um, well, oh, you wouldn't believe it. Um, we followed the directions you gave us and it took us to this, this strange grove of the tallest cedars that you could imagine. And they were like, it was like they were forming a wall uh, in front of us. And there were these strange markings on them too. Um, oh, Abdil knows what they uh, said. He, he wrote them down. Um, I don't know if it was important, uh, but um, well, we tried to pass them, the, these trees. Um, I even tried to climb up them, because uh, I'm really good at climbing like that. Um, but I couldn't get through. It was the strangest thing. It was like every time we tried to, to cross the trees, we just ended up back where we started, you know? It's like something didn't want us to get through. I know that sounds crazy, but I swear it's the truth. There is magic in this world. I do not, it does not surprise me. That oh, good. Like... I thought you think that was crazy. And so she looks around at the rest of you and she says, Is that all? Well, tell I'll me what the, about stress. this. I'll, I'll start stress eating to avoid talking. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the sigils found. Sigils, yes. I'll describe. I'll describe the the shape of them and uh, the 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 markings of the trees. Very matter of factly. Okay, great. <laughs> Are you showing like little sketches in your book? Like, mm -hmm. are you showing mm -hmm. that we found this and this and this and this and this? Okay, so is it fair? Uh, uh, that uh, Beth is Laylee trying to discourage her from asking any hard questions, like to try to divert, to divert her yeah. attention. So that, yeah, okay. That's why when she asked, like, if if anything else is, you know, what else? Yep. So that's why. Yep. So I'm the sigils. Yep. So make a saving throw with charisma <laughs> to see if you can convince her. Yeah, sure. Um, come on, plus one charisma. Oh, and I'm going to say, sorry, sorry, sorry. Everybody, you get an extra plus one because everybody's going along with your story. Yep. Okay, oh, so, okay, so it gives you a total plus two. Let's not fuck this up. <laughs> oh, I love you so much, Dice. Why weren't you rolling like this last night? Uh, I got a 10, natural, 10, plus two okay. is 12. Okay. I never roll like this. So Great. Nice. Um, is anybody else adding any details to this account as Abdil and Laylee? Is the, Oz, is, Oz is not, obviously. Oz is like not going to just. Sounds just and nodding just in not, agreement. Not, okay. <laughs> so between Laylee's um, enthusiastic account of uh, part of the story and Abdil's uh, uh, supplementing information, mm -hmm. um, she um, sort of nods her head um, and uh, is satisfied. Uh, with the answers. So um, uh, 
thank you for your, um, for your work. I'm happy to see that you all have returned in good health. Um, you have proven worthy scouts. The information you bring me um, uh, agrees with my own understanding of what may lie there. And um, I may call upon you in the future. Perhaps if you were to let me examine this scroll of yours, I could uncover more details that might help with the search. My ears having, having my, seen my the my location ears firsthand. Really perk up. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid that won't be possible. Mm, a pity. The scroll is far away. That is why I've committed it to memory. Um, and the, uh, the attendant uh, disperses uh, the remainder of your fee. So uh, that means Abdiel gets seven solar pieces and everybody else gets 10 each. Um, that mission has come to a conclusion. Me, can I just say one thing? Like, if I can just narrate something, like, yeah. when we're departing, can I slip like four silver pieces uh, into Abdiel's bag? Oh, of course oh. you can. Oh my God. That he just won't discover until later. Yes. So, how does that? So, uh, like, he's turning to leave and you just, like, nobody even notices, just a furtive movement. And yeah, we're just leaving. I'm just going to, you know, just brush by him, drop them in there, and keep walking. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Full anti pickpocket. <laughs> <laughs> it is right. This is why Lily's so cool. Yeah. So adjust your adjust your tallies appropriately. There is no way that Abdul picks up on that. So it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, if anybody marked bonds, you can go ahead and clear them because enough time's gone by where you don't have to worry about that. Um, and nobody took any damage of any kind, right? No hit points, no ability damage. That's all good. It was a scouting mission. Um, and now we're going to wrap up. So uh, uh, I usually have a conversation here where we sort of discuss what each person did um, just to, to, to like, you know, to see how it went. So um, uh, for class XP fighter. So Isan, did you solve a problem with physical prowess? I, I, I can't recall at any point where physical prowess came yeah. into uh, play. So uh, that's a no on that one. Uh, unless, unless it's carrying around a poor elderly fool. <laughs> I think that totally counts. Because mm. like, right. the whole point is it highlights your physical prowess. Right? Right. Like you're a big, strong human. And you also slam a river in armor. And also slam a river in armor, right? Oh, yeah. Um, it's true that like solving a problem is open to interpretation there. But I feel right. like, I think just you doing both those things together uh, add up. So you get XP for that. Yeah, because quite frankly, I, I don't see uh, uh, Abdil climbing that rope without. Some... Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, voles are not big uh, rope climbers. No. Well, actually, if they're small enough, they can totally do that. But no, I, 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 think, I think just as the creature, I think they're they're very much like <laughs> down or under. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, thief, Laylee, did you solve a problem with stealth or trickery? I just solved a problem you with trickery. Just did. You yes. totally did. Okay. Uh, magic user creator solve a problem with magic we have yet to see Bob could you just share the names of your spells are you, you so so uh, yes for those I may not adventure with so, uh, soon enough yeah in his little belt pouch um, uh, Abdul keeps uh, ampules of, of blood and and then crushed bone and so his spells are uh, Semizark's blood staff Ooh. which uh, and then Peranti's thundering sound. That's okay. uh, the the voice of thunder. Yeah. Okay. And the way those work, you guys, it's he get, given those spell names. Uh, Bob gets to kind of like interpret that and apply effects to it. And given on the depending on the situation, and so what they do can vary from circumstance to circumstance. Um, excited to see those in play. Okay. And Bard, what was your what's your XP? I don't trigger? actually know. It's on the uh, back of the sheet, and I don't have it printed out here in front of me. Um, let me Bard see if I can. Performance. Uh, deliver member performance. I mean, oh my God. It, was, it wasn't yes. any good, but it was memorable. Oh, it's absolutely <laughs> memorable. And that's the whole idea, <laughs> is that even if it was, it was not great to listen to, it was totally memorable. So Those howling dogs are going to like haunt us for the rest of our days, man. <laughs> Success. 
I love the idea of a chorus of like jackal people, like where it's just like arr, 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 arr. <laughs> yeah. Everybody who hears the music for the first time thinks it's terrifying, and and <laughs> we're just like you know we're we're rocking out, and everybody else is like way far away. Yeah. All right, that's classic. Even cross cultural, um, like you don't have to be from Tantalar to get into uh, to have not fun music. You just have to have the right ears. That's right. It's like um, it's like death metal. Um. Uh, or bagpipes. <laughs> or bagpipes. It's definitely more or like ska. that. More like bagpipes. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, traits, real quick. Uh, Abdil, what are your traits? Um, so manipulative and pious. Oh, so pious. Very pious. I did not Super see you manipulate, manipulative, which is not a problem at all. Uh, well, I yeah, I was trying to man manipulate in the beginning to get the um, to get the money uh, maneuvered around. Oh yeah 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 and, and um yeah. and I guess you just did because you were trying to get the scroll too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah totally um i felt media manipulated by abdul as well but like in a way that oz was comfortable being manipulated like just like yeah i'm into this so manipulate away manipulation with consent as long as that's the yeah. as long as that's the way it works okay great so uh abdul gets xp for that um uh what are Laylee's traits um i'm surprising to anyone they are idealistic and impatient oh nice <laughs> love it so mark xp yeah, I think she did that. Oz. Uh, honest, hasty, and egotistical. Yeah, yes. great. Oh, and so honest. Oh my God, he got anxious at the end there. Couldn't. Uh, truth, <laughs> truth Market is a hard place for Oz to try to... Truth, truth Market is a very difficult place. Oh, oh, I, that, it was funny, you, you said out, just outside the Truth Market, and my first thought was like, if I was a real estate developer, what would I call that neighborhood? Like, so Truma. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the truth market. It's just south of the just truth. Say, yeah. market. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's the Soho of of yeah. Moon Hadir. Um and Isan. Uh, Isan's traits are compassionate, chaste, and hopeful. Oh. oh and I, I was man. really trying to lean oh. into the hopeful. Oh my God! Yes, this is going to be a great legend. <laughs> <laughs> this this eight day hike to a ruined building will go down. I'm gonna see an eagle. I I just hope I'm gonna see it. Just <laughs> fantastic. Um, okay, and now the uh, group questions. Did you make an exciting discovery? Oh, do, uh, alignment. Oh, sorry, alignment. Yeah, they, how's that? How'd that go? Uh, yeah. So uh, I I feel like uh, uh, Beth and I may have the same one with uh, at least for me the heel the evening of the heel because uh, I'm neutral. I, 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 I abhor imbalance, uh, literal or figurative. Um, I also satisfy a lot of personal <laughs> desires, but yeah. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and okay, I think so that lately by... Go ahead, sorry. What are the, sorry, what is the true neutral alignment goal since it sounds like you're the same as me? Personal, uh, uh, satisfy a personal desire and, or correct an imbalance, so I think. Definitely. Okay. Well, uh, both of those things are true, and the and the the giving of uh, of silver yes, and the giving to, of the silver to yes, Abdil 100%. was correcting an imbalance, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, sure. Totally, you, you totally, it was totally in character. You didn't even know it, but you got your your plane to your alignment. What's Oz's alignment? Uh, chaotic. Oh. Um, I I don't. So I didn't disrupt order. I don't think. But I was when I when I pocketed the piece of petrified wood. And taking a defiled holy symbol out of its holy place, I was mm -hmm. trying to cause trouble. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, That's key for that. What's Isan's alignment? Uh, good. So the goal is help someone in need at your own expense. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. Great. Okay. Isan is like a pulp novel cover hero. <laughs> <laughs> except, I mean, except he's chased. All those guys were like, yeah. Uh, that's that's the new that's the novel thing um and they them <laughs> pronouns man we're breaking this <laughs> isan's breaking new ground for the pulp novel hero that's yeah cool. yeah that's, that's right um okay awesome did you make an exciting discovery sure did yeah temple, crazy, nice, temple in the forest overcome a difficult obstacle you got through that wall of trees um by talking to them yes i did not expect that <laughs> That was not the way I was expecting that to go. That was amazing. And the fact that it built on Adam's idea, you know, that was just great the way that that all built in. Yeah, high fives all around. That was a cool effort too. I was really impressed by that. Um, and there was some definite party synergy here. 
uh, did you acquire some memorable booty? Uh, I think that that petrified piece of the temple totally counts. So thanks to Oz, you guys did All get right. some memorable booty. All right. Oh, uh, I feel like you're being very generous there. <laughs> We just don't know. It's care. It's carrying a rotting curse with it. So, we're... right. It'll be memorable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Memorable. It's it's well, like remember. taking the, what is it? A uh, black sand from Hawaii or taking sand yeah. from Hawaii? It's it's just <laughs> yeah. yeah they get so many pounds of it sent back every year. So like our next journey is to return the petrified. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> piece. <laughs> the Ribbonwood Board of Tourism will be on you. If you're not yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, that is that. Hey, on time too. Woo! Wonderful. Thank you, Jason. This Thank was so much fun. Yeah, yeah my pleasure. Yeah, Thank really you great. all. You were such a great inaugural team for this. It was like set the tone. Super fantastic. Thanks for um, thanks for showing up. And we and all live. I was I was really expecting at least one death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are such a, a group of great life choices and dangerous yeah. situations and places that uh... <laughs> all of us clinging like barnacles to Isan. Save us, save us. Yeah, this can be handled in, in like downtime, sort of off camera action. But I yeah. do, I want to, I want to, with, I want to sit down at some point with Abdil and trade the petrified wood for help translating my song. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, okay. Let's just say that that, yeah, that just happens. That totally happens. Yeah. Like, cause you know, between now and the next mission that at least a week's gonna go by and you totally have time to do that. So that, cool. that's problem solved. Wonderful. Right. Okay. All right, any more closing business? Everybody good? All right, yeah. awesome. All right, see you next time on the- guys. Hi everyone. Hope to see you on the adventuring, adventuring uh, party again soon. Good night. That was great. Good night, everybody.